Welcome to Truth Uncompromised. I am your host, Rhonda. Join us every Thursday at 7 p.m. Eastern Time. Truth is peace. Truth is justice and freedom to love, live, and be. Music provided by SourceVibrations.com Uncompromised show. I am your host, Rhonda, and tonight is Thursday, March 7th. We have a great show planned for you tonight. Uh, we are wrapping up our series on the forgotten black nobility uh, and the Americas. Um, really, really good uh, series that we did. Um, I do want to send out a wonderful shout out. A lot of the basis for this series was used uh, with two books uh, by Brother Lee Cummings. The first one is The Negro Question Part 4, The Missing Link. The other one is The Negro Question Part 6, 
the 13 Black Colonies. You can get these two books on Amazon. They're very affordable. Um, I would highly, 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 highly recommend them to your collection. They're easy reads. The brother really packed it with a lot of uh, information. You will not be disappointed. Um, I feel that they are definitely collector's items. Um, so last week, although it's been explosive enough, this particular series of the information that we've brought forward with other sources of people that have been putting out the information on um, melanated people in Europe and how they sat on all of the different thrones, uh, we got into literally the ship manifest. And um, I definitely want to send kudos out to Brother Lee Cummings for that um, because it's nice to have proof or what the young folks say receipts on um, what you are talking about. So he literally went and pulled the ship manifest in Europe. Um, so meaning the uh, nobility's bloodline, he pulled the ship manifest on the different bloodlines that were coming over to the Americas. So he had literally the name of the ship, the date, of the ship on down to the day of the ship and um, he highlighted the um, surnames of the black nobility royal that were on those particular ships. Uh, so very, very explosive information. Um, I found it interesting that most of those names, surnames that were listed on those ship manifests are common names among melanated people today in the Americas, very common surnames of melanated people here in the Americas. So um, I'm trying to get which book that was in, just a second, I had it in my notes. Um, I would, again, highly recommend that the family pick up this, uh, both pieces of the this work, the book four and book six, because they go together. Um, and read this information for yourself, especially those that have been researching their lineage. And if you run into a stopping point when you get where you see where some of um, your relatives, you see that um, they don't have a record for them because it goes back to Europe. And then you have to uh, get to a particular um site that has the European records, now you know why that is the case. Um, so he got into the ship manifest on part six. So he got into the ship manifest on the Negro question part six, the 13 black colonies. Um, so we're going to conclude the series tonight. Um, we're going to go start getting into the founders of the 13 colonies. We're going to talk about these charters of Americas. We've talked about those before. Uh, specifically, I brought up the charters of the Carolinas. So we're going to get into those a little bit more. And then we're going to get into uh, melanated Russia and the melanated Japanese. All right. So with that said, let me bring on Sis. Because uh, Brother Sean, he's going to join us in a little bit. Let me bring on Sis Sandra. Peace and love, Sis. How are you? Peace and love to you, Miss Rhonda. I'm fine. How about yourself? <laughs> I'm doing <laughs> good, Sis. I'm good. Doing good. Good. I'm so surprised. I'm first. Oh my goodness. <laughs> I know. I know. Yeah. Yeah. Brother Sean, he he's running a little late. He'll he'll join us later. So good to hear your voice, Sis. Good to hear you, too. Good to hear you, too. All right. So um, I'll let you go first. Do you have anything you want to share uh, with the family, with the go-head-on, with the fuckery, or anything you would like to share with the family? You know, what is this idea now that they're going to try to put us up as, as examples of being like them? 
you know, like with R. Kelly and that Smollett young man. Um, uh-huh. I think a lot of that is all staged. They had him have, you know, when I mm-hmm. saw him, I didn't know what R. Kelly looked like. Uh, really, because I I just like I like his music. I never paid any attention to what he looked like, and I okay, right. I didn't but the thing is, you know, a long time ago, when a star was being born, so to speak, they would make up a, a profile of them mm-hmm. to get publicity, and yep. uh, and this is what I think has transpired with both of these young men, is that. They have made them a Hollywood profile, you know, a music profile, and Uh they made their money off that profile, and now they're paying for it. Mm. You see, Mm. because see, all these guys come up, no, no, no pass, you know, and then all of a sudden, oh, they the bad guys, you know, like Marilyn Monroe, they built. They built her up really good as a sex goddess, a sex kid, and this, 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 and this. And so mm-hmm. I think they do, they've done that to these young men. And probably more people like that. Because, right. uh, and now it's coming back to roost. Because now they're saying, oh, this is the way they are. Somebody's seen this. I don't believe all that stuff. I don't know, R. Kelly, mm-hmm. but that's what I saw in his face. When I first saw him, I said, they made up a profile of him. That's just, you know, it's just like my instincts, my inner self. Just say, oh, uh-huh. they made a profile about him. And that's what the public bought. And now he's living that profile. So this uh-huh. is what I'm, I'm tired of this stuff. I'm sick of Trump in the bedroom. I don't care about his, his mistresses and all that other stuff. It's none right. of my business. It's right. none of my business. But anyway, that's right. what I miss. No, no, be, very good point. Um, as far as R. Uh, Kelly or R. Um, you know, I'm a native Chicagoan, so the stuff about him messing with young girls—that is truly, it's not new news. That's no, it's not. been around, yeah, you know, thirty something years easily now. Now this, um. So, in other words, they knew what it was back then when he first hit the scenes, uh, but because he was making them a lot of money, whatever the case may be, it was swept under the rug. He was able to get away with it, yada, yada, yada. Um, So, now, fast forward 30-something years later, um, you know, sure, the behavior probably didn't stop. Uh, He may have switched it up and went to 17-year-olds and 18-year-olds, but, you know, beyond 18, I agree with you. Um, It is what it is. That's none of our business. Um, But with all of that said, you know, this is just my opinion. It's all psyopses anyway. Yeah, All of it is, it. Is, 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 yeah, it, it's a psyops because it started out with Cosby. Right. And Cosby shit was older than uh, Ke- Ke- Kelly's. Okay. Um, then it jumped to R. Kelly, um, Smullett. I just think he just did a dumbass move. Uh, and maybe some people did know in the industry that he was going to pull off this hoax. Uh, I was piss poor and, you know, whether or not his career survives will tell us who was all involved. So in other Mm -hmm. words, if his career doesn't miss a beat, that lets us know that it was a planned event. Um, If his career was, you know, over, that means that he kind of pulled that one off himself and ruined his own career. But all of those things, and I'm not vouching for any of them, and because now they're resurfacing with Michael Jackson and um, oh, that's on there now, you know, it's like yeah, yeah, it's it's just it's it's all psyops, and you know they put Gail and Oprah on it to legitimize the psyops. Yeah, um, yeah. And again, uh, this is not mm-hmm. in any way, not in any way, am I vouching for any of these men. 
No. I am not vouching for any of them at all. What I am saying is it all clearly screams out a PSYOP. And it's interesting because the PSYOP most of the time involve melanated folk. So in other right. words, they want melanated people's energy attached to these media uh, things. Okay, and I go back to when I see stuff like that played out in the media over and over again. I think about the OJ case and, you know, how that was dragged all the way out. And, you know, now some folks are breaking that whole saga down, saying that that was one big psyops. Yeah, um, that it was a, a, a big involved. event. Yeah, I was so, saying they were involved in it. The, uh, some of the the Kardashian man was involved in it, helping him. You know, I'm like, huh? That he was yeah, a lawyer at that. Yeah, he was a lawyer at the time. Their father. So yeah, it's you know, it it could be this latest R. Kelly stuff. Very well, could be a psyop production, then that doesn't excuse his behavior. Uh, oh, and no, especially, no. The, you know, the shit they let him get away with for decades. Um, right. So, you know, okay. anything that's coming out of mainstream media, I look at it with a grain of salt. Because we know that if they're putting it before us, you know, it's some stink behind it. Because the stuff they should be putting before us, they don't. So, but very good call on that one, sis. Very, very good call. Um, let me bring in Brother Sean. I think this is Brother Sean. Peace and love, Brother. How are you? Holiness and power, sis. I'm well. How about you? I'm well. I'm well. Good to hear your voice. Sis Sandra? Yes, Brother. How are you? Good <laughs> to hear your voice. Indeed, indeed. Uh, Kale's guilty as all hell. I don't care what nobody yeah. says. He's been paying his way out of this. And, of course, he's had handlers because he can't even read and write. True that. True that. And his finances is in trouble now. Thing is, he ain't been able to keep buying his way out of it. And, quite frankly, I'm tired of people thinking that just because somebody black that they being framed. And that's I mean, a good as, point. As, as, that's as, as a good point. People are paying attention to this whole saga that we've been going through. Black people been ignorant and dirty as fuck since the beginning of time. Yep, that's true. We got to quit. We got to quit giving out passes. That's why we still in the predicament that we in. It ain't enough white people. It ain't enough white power to keep us down. We doing it to ourselves. Can't argue even when with they, you. even when they tell us the truth, we think it's a lie. That just goes to show that we're not in tune spiritually like we're supposed to be. If we keep thinking that everything is a lie, and we know for a fact they ain't never completely fooled us with just a complete lie. There's always some right. truth in it. Right. Right. That's Absolutely. what we got to get back to. We got to get back to the truth of it. We have to start holding people accountable. accountable and responsible, not waiting on them to do it, not waiting for them to lock people up, this, that, or the other. I mean, yep. I'm not advocating violence, but to me, motherfuckers like that, when you catch them, put two in them and put them in the fucking ground and keep it moving. Keep it moving. Yeah, they don't so need he to keep talking about decades. this shit. Yeah. Right. Somebody should have been tapped that ass. Yeah. Yeah, and especially the the men, and this this goes back to when you know we talk about the roles in the in the melanated community of what the role of the the woman is and what the role of the men, and it's protect. And clearly, those young girls were not protected. You know, where was the fathers? Where were the uncles? Um, for him to be able to, yeah, the cousins and them, for him to be able to to get to get away with some shit like that. For decades now. Well, decades. You know, for them to wait this long to put it all out there, this had to be all planned. 
Because but he, that's not he, wrong. He just ran out of money now. He's running out of money. So he ran out of money. <laughs> so uh, Smollett ran out of money, and OJ ran out of money. I mean, um, Cosby now, ran we're talking out about, We're talking about R. Kelly in particular. We know why they got Cosby at the time that they got him. I'm saying this, uh, is they're making, they saved all this. It's like, you know, your trump card, your trump card uh-huh. in the, in the uh-huh. game. Uh-huh. They're playing it now for a reason. That's yeah, what I'm saying. They're, they're black showing us up. Black people killing each other every day. Black women are being raped every day. Black girls are being raped every day. Every so day. Because, it's a, because it's about R. Kelly, that means that it's not going on. No, 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 I'm not, not saying that. that I'm used, but that's what I'm saying. He's just an perfect. example. If we, if we know it's a distraction, we, we see that. Yeah. But now what? We just keep focusing on the distraction, or do we start taking care of business and getting these motherfuckers up out of our community? Yep. We need to start making examples out of motherfuckers. If we start putting it to our own, these other motherfuckers going to see that we ain't on this shit. We ain't right. having it, period. It's time that we lay down the law. We need to quit talking about them or they. To say that they yeah. are creating these distractions, this, that, that's still giving them too much goddamn power. If we know what it is, why do we keep talking about it? Why not just ignore it and do what we're supposed to be doing? That's in this Very shit. good point. End game is here. It's, it's time to put this shit to an end. Let them, take, let them take the dirty up out of our community. Because anybody that they bring in there, whether people say it's a distraction or not, they play ball with them. They're in their society. They were no longer one of us anymore anyway. And that, now that's the truth. Now, to me, if something happened to one of y'all, oh, not some shit jumping off. Okay, that, right. that ain't a distraction. Y'all, y'all, y'all want some real fucking work. <laughs> and as far as little motherfuckers that sold out on us, fuck y'all. Go die with your masters. They shouldn't have did it. They shouldn't have turned their back on us. So I ain't even worried about this. Right. They get what they get, basically. Right. Right. Totally, totally understand, brother. So you have any go ahead on with the fuckery this week? Oh, yeah, of course. Of course I do. (laughs) I know it's always something. (laughs) And tell us how you really (laughs) feel. Yeah, he just came no. in swinging when Sean gets upset like that. I just let him go for it, boy. That's all I really feel like. <laughs> oh, yeah. gosh. Here we go with the Savior Trump. Oh, yeah. What mm-hmm. some are calling the greatest white man to ever live. Are you serious? Wow. What, what exactly has he done? Delusional. What exactly has he done? What? I mean, <sighs> they keep talking about black. military tribunals and people in jail get noticed and stuff. But we keep seeing all these motherfuckers traipsing around doing what the fuck they want to do. Mm-hmm. They keep talking about Miss Sarah and just Sarah and this, that, and other, and we're allegedly on the gold back currency. <laughs> they even talk about the 150 and $20 bill, how half of them has gold writing on it or gold on it, this, that, and other. They're saying that that's, you know, supposed to be an indication that we are on the go-back standard. This, oh, really? that, other. But my whole thing is this. Why not just discharge the debt before we even get out of the central banking system? If we mm-hmm. ever get out of it. Mm-hmm. Well, well, they my can do it. Is still being I taken. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, if all this stuff is already in place... And people are still losing their houses. I mean, we, we, how do they get compensated for that? Right. I mean, all the things that people are going through nowadays, people are killing themselves behind being in debt that never existed. Right. Right. And then, of course, I don't want to get back on the whole Aboriginal thing again because I, I listen to Trump, I listen to his people. This, that, and other. I listen to the D- Democrats, and nobody talks about Aboriginal Americans. Period. They don't uh-uh. talk about the original people from this land, the true nope. Americans. Nope. 
So a lot of people still believe that there's something else. Ain't nothing in this new deal for you. But a one way trip up out of here. Because if you're black yeah. or African American, you don't have no rights. So you're not going to be a part of the new deal anyway. Yep. So now what? Yeah. And I stepped down, sis. <laughs> okay. Well, thank you for bringing that up, brother. Because, um, you know, there are people, and, and, and I don't like for people to do this. Um, that's why I have been advocating for people to take care of self, take care of your home first, and don't depend on anyone or anything outside of self because you're setting yourself up. So stop swapping God. Okay? So stop. So, for example, folks swapping Jesus for um Raw or the conscious community, or swapping one movement for another movement, and now folks are literally, and they know who they are, looking as Trump as a white daddy, and you're still searching for something outside of self. And you're going to be severely, severely let down. So that's all we're trying to say now. That is your right. If you want to do that, that's your right. But we're just telling you, consider that a warning. Been saying it and saying it over and over again. I said it out the gate when Trump card came into the mix. He's not going to be for or against. He's put in there to straddle the fence but he's not a savior. He's just not. And he's showing you that he's not a savior. And a little trinkets here and a little trinkets there about setting some folks free, this, that, and the third. So what? So what? So, you know, you all do what you want to do on it. You know, we're just, giving you a warning. Um, you know, me personally, I don't know how many times folks head need to be bumped for them to get it. And, you know, maybe some people never will get it. So it is what it is. Okay. But very good point, brother Sean. Uh, very good point, sis. Thanks much. Okay. So, and I'll make this quick cause I know we got information to go over, but as all of the distraction and all of the fuckery going on, we have a big announcement that was made, uh, but of course, it's being brushed over, and everybody is so comatose and dumbed down with the brain dead shit that they don't pay attention to the major stuff. And like Brother Sean said, they put the truth in there. So we can't say we don't know. It's just we're not paying attention. So other publications picked up on this, but I'm going to go with RT News. Staggering Discovery. This was on the 22nd of um, February. So I had just ran across it. Staggering Discovery reveals moon lies inside Earth's atmosphere. Uh Uh-huh. Wait a minute, bruh. The moon lies inside Earth's atmosphere? I thought y'all said y'all been to the motherfucking moon. And to go to the moon, don't you need them calculations? Or am I missing something? Don't you need calculations to know how far you need to go to get somewhere, to build the equipment to get there, all of this X, Y, Z, one, two, three. And you done been, you done took my fucking rocks from it and all of that, right? Mm-hmm. Okay, so in order to do all of that, wouldn't you would have to know how big Earth's atmosphere is? Mm-hmm. Okay. <sighs> The Earth's atmosphere is much
much bigger than previously thought. Extending far beyond the moon, a team of scientists have revealed. The amazing discovery was made thanks to data that has been sitting unexamined for over 20 years. Wait a minute, bruh. You went to the moon? Shit, I don't even think I was born when they supposedly and motherfucking allegedly went to the moon. Where you done made all them calculations, you done figured out how to get there, how to get back, what equipment to build to get there, what motherfucking suits and stuff the uh, the uh, people needed, what equipment would be right to take all them pictures, all of that. Back up in the 60s. So you trying to convince us that y'all had data sitting around from 20 years ago that tells you what size the atmosphere is? You supposedly and allegedly figured that shit out back in the 60s. So, we now know that the atmosphere surrounding our planet is 630,000 kilometers, 390, uh, sorry, yeah, 391, 464 miles away. And it's 50 times the the diameter of Earth. Thanks to the discovery and analysis of decades-old data by scientists at Russia Space Research uh, Institute, it means that the moon is part of our atmosphere and not outside of it. In fact, it's actually located right in the middle of our atmosphere at an average distance of 384 thousand or 238,000 uh, miles from Earth. All right, so it says the jaw-dropping data was collected by NASA slash European Space Agency solar and heliospheric observations SOHO between 1996 and 1998 and had been gathering dust in an archive since then. SOHO unwitt- unwittingly gathered the groundbreaking information when it was mapping the geocorona, the layer of hydrogen atoms located where the atmosphere merges with outer space. The thin layer glows in the far ultraviolet light, which can only be seen from space and is difficult to measure. Okay, so they're saying that it's difficult to measure it's far, blah, blah, this, that, and the third, but yet you can go on YouTube right now as I'm talking and get amateurs that have store-bought motherfucking equipment. Now, they may have spent some change on it. They may have spent a grand or two on the equipment, and they can zoom right close up on the moon. But yet, according to them, it's 200 and something thousand miles away. Oh, okay then, bro. Okay, whatever. Um, it says, because of this, uh, I think I read that. Okay, because of this, it was until now thought to be about 200,000 kilometers or 124,000 miles from Earth, as that is the point at which solar radiation pressure would override Earth's gravity. Soho's SWAN instrument has the ability to to measure far ultraviolet emissions from hydrogen atoms, allowing it to make its amazing observation of the geo corona. Okay, so again, this article, um, let's see, this article came off of RT News on Feb the 21st, and there's other publications out there as well. Um, So, again, now they want to admit that the moon is in Earth's atmosphere, but they're still grossly lying about the distance of the moon because we know it's a lot closer. You can, you know, spend a couple of thousand dollars on a good telescope, and you can see the shit yourself, okay? Now, they're doing that as they have started to launch 
their own artificial moon. Okay? So just pay attention as they're slowly putting out this information because they have to come up with explanations on this solar radiation, the plasma shooting across the skies, and these multiple suns. Okay? So just start paying attention to the scientific news that they're dropping, um, which the quote, quote, conspiracy theory community has been telling you all all along that the sun and the moon is inside of Earth's atmosphere, and it's a hell of a lot closer than what they've been telling us. Okay, so that's my um, go head on with the fuckery, although they're still not telling the truth about the numbers. Now they want to come out with the moon is in Earth's atmosphere. You, uh, so I'll you know, uh, pause. Go ahead, sis. You know, I don't know about you, but I never believed about that moon stuff, period. Because they can't no. even shoot a rock straight up. It always goes sideways about 45 <laughs> degrees. Right. But it never goes up. But no. On no. Studio, Studio Nine, and what is it? Uh, Norwalk or Downey or something like that? I forget which where it is. It's where they shot the moon scenes. And that's where that space stuff, you know, where they have them floating up in the air and anti gravity. They have a big old tank. I saw this a long time ago, so I can't remember all of the details of what they showed. But. Uh, conspiracists, they know that they practice that in it, or they shoot all those so-called moonwalks in um, in, a, in a studio. Now, right. one of the things that a, a, a preacher ter- uh, pointed out years ago, he said if they were on the moon, how come there was no dust on that moon? That surface was clear almost. You would, With all the debris that hit the moon and all that kind of stuff, it wouldn't be no flat surface. So they haven't done no moon things. And they did say that those astronauts lied about all of that. And so I never believed they did it anyway. Even if it's inside of the Earth's atmosphere, they did not go there. They didn't do it. I, and, I, and this is what they say, they, they didn't do it. So right. they can say it's inside, they can say it outside. And plus you got the firmament. And when you mm-hmm. went, I went to, um, what's this, Daytona? Danny Daytona? Mm-hmm. Yeah, uh, Danny of uh, uh, Daytona, of uh, Daytona, yeah. And I saw the firmament. And yeah, I mean, I, yeah. So how did the moon get inside of that? Just like the sun's inside of it with the simulator. Oh, okay, I got that one. Yeah, because um, and and he's one of the the people I was talking about. He's just using um, regular equipment that you can buy. You know, he spent obviously he spent some money on it, but do it look like them shots are two hundred and thirty something thousand miles away? Ah, they look like they're right over your head. Exactly. Because and I mean, he got details, and because he even showed the firmament and shows the stars embedded in the firmament. He shows Sirius embedded in the firmament. So they can get the blank out of here with that bull S. They really can. Yes. And I think it was Amir, Amir, a who? Well, I, can't, I never get that child's name right. But he showed that, um, oh, God, I've been lost my thought trying to get to his name. Um, <laughs> he showed in the ancient records, they talked about the firmament, and they mm-hmm. talked about creation and how the 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 ha and the wa was is recorded as the agents of creation on this planet, and that they and they showed some uh, uh, artifacts where we're inside like a fishbowl. Mhm. Mhm. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you're in and so when Danny Daytona, uh, Daytona was doing his work with his uh, drone and everything, you can see the light of the the of the uh, sphere. Mm-hmm. The sound was bouncing. I said, "Is that what we be looking at every day, gum day?" <laughs> so it's yeah. really close. It's not that far away. Mm-mm. 
Mm-mm. They and I mean, yeah, anybody that's been on the plane and if you, you know, been on there at night or you've been during the day, you can see the shit up in the sky. Yeah, you can. You can see it. But it's just been the conditioning and the educational system that say we live on a spinning ball and the sun is millions of miles away, although, um, you know, people catch beautiful sunsets of the, the sun coming down like it's kissing the water, right. all of that. So, I mean, it is what it is. But, you know, I find it funny that people that are really, really in the Bible, because the Bible maps out the landscape of what? the earth. Yeah, and if you read the um, Enoch, the book of Enoch, he went even further and mapped out the landscape. He went into even the dimensions, but right. yet they don't. Now that's that's their book that they put their credence into. But you're not going to believe it. the book that you put your credence into. You're going to believe the spinning ball at however many miles an hour they claim and. You know, the sun is so many million miles. Oh, okay, then blood. If that's what you want to believe, fine. But now it's the moon is inside our atmosphere. Okay. Okay. Hmm. Okay. Whatever you want to believe, people. So, uh, yeah, so just pay attention, family. Uh, I'm not going to read the other article. I'm just going to, because uh, time is getting short, I'm just going to let the family aware that I am starting to see scientific articles and um, the scientific community and out of the uh, space uh, community, they're starting to talk about the uh, magnetic field uh, and plasma. Okay? So we've been telling you that this is the second year we've been talking about, well, as far as oh shit, we've been telling you for probably three years by now. Plasma, this is going in the second year we've been talking to you about the plasma. Um, So I'm starting to see in the scientific journals and some of the space journals, them talking about Earth's magnetic field um, and also the plasma. Okay. Now, again, the reason that they have to start bringing these things out because, you know, we're experiencing all of these extreme weather, and now they're finally admitting it's because of the magnetic pole shift, okay? Although they're still not being completely honest about it, um, they are slowly releasing this information because they have no other choice, okay? So um, just pay attention uh, and just want to, once again, folks are still recording in the sky uh, two, three suns, okay, still catching the sun, multiple suns in the sky, and they're either using projections to cover these things up with these dark clouds, so if you start to see dark clouds in the sky, start paying attention to them, because uh, it appears that that's where the multiple suns are being cloaked as well as um, other planetary spheres that's being cloaked as well. Uh, So you can go on YouTube that people have tons of videos, um, legitimate videos, because it's not like one or two people with the videos. It's tons of people. This is all across the world. This is being seen um, as well as, huge ass spacecraft. Now I don't know if these spacecrafts are military spacecrafts that they have um engineered themselves to put up in the air and cloaked, but nonetheless people are definitely um catching this stuff. Uh so just start paying attention and start getting your psyche prepared forward because no at this point and brother Sean just dropped off he'll come back in I don't know and at this point because some people are saying that they may try to fake an alien invasion um, they certainly have the equipment to do it 
uh, because people have recorded with them using that Project Blue Bean. So meaning literally taking the sky and using it as a projector to put holograms you know, up there. You know, a melanated man made that system. Um, but also Ronald Reagan always said in his speech that that's the only way to bring unity to the planet is to sure pretend did. they're under attack. And so they, yeah. they quote that all the time. And I just heard a speech on there not too long ago. I can hardly hear it because it was old one and it was really low. But that's what they're saying, and that's, you know, chaos is their god. Right. They, uh, they worship right. the god of chaos because out of chaos comes con- uh, Order. conformity and control. And, right. you know, I'm like, okay, after everybody crazy, yeah, okay, that'll work. Right. So, you know, so anyway, that's what that's what they're trying to follow up on on that kind of statement. And plus, uh, Russia knows in 2012, I told you about this before, that uh, they are being, the earth is under attack uh, by our ancestors and that they have to save the planet from outside attack. But the United States wouldn't even listen to them because they want to do their own thing. But anyway, that's my statement. Interesting, interesting. Okay, family, so um, I did want to just share that with you all. Just start paying attention uh, to all of these space stories that they're putting out because they're mixing truth in there. Uh, of course, they're going to put their lies on it because they they're not going to give it to you all the way. Um, but pay attention. That's their way of slowly releasing it. Okay, so real quick, let me make sure Brother Sean. Uh, okay, he hasn't gotten back in the queue yet. Um, so real quick, the, the last week as we discussed, um, we talked about the ship manifest and we were on um, part six, the Negro question part six, the 13 black colonies. This is from the book, Brother Lee Cummings. Uh, he started breaking down those ship manifests on page 116. Um, and so he ran it all the way to 139. And the purpose of that was twofold. He was showing you the common surnames that melanated people carry today. And then the other one was he showed you uh, the bloodline of the stewards, which is the line of King James. Okay, so he showed you on one of the ships that it was filled with stewards, okay? Um, So that's what we discussed last week. Now, the bombshell for me in the book was when he also talked about how Harriet Tubman, who is known as a um, slave, uh, she was known for rescuing slaves out of, quote, quote, slavery. So he traced her particular heritage as being a steward. So meaning she was a part of King James Stewart bloodline. So as she was making those trips down south, she was actually rescuing her family members um, out of slavery or indentured servitude, however you want to put it as well. So uh, that was also in the Negro Question Part 6, the 13 colonies. And so that information started on like page um, 147. All right. So uh, with that said, oh, let me bring back in Brother Sean because he got kicked off. She was an abolitionist. Abolitionist. I could not say that word. I got all tongue tied. <laughs> Abolitionist. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Brother, are you back with us? Yes, ma'am. Okay. <laughs> okay. Now, interestingly enough, family, I had to um had an appointment that I had to go to uh from a business perspective and the town that that appointment was in was Dublin. And so, of course, as soon as I hit that town and I saw the sign, Welcome to Dublin, I just cracked up. I'm like, Welcome to Blackland, because remember, Dublin um, means black, OK? 
okay? Mm-hmm. And it just really just, I, I'm just still in shock, family, to know that all of this particular history was all in our face and plain sight. And it so explains a lot of things. It really, really, really explains a lot of things. Um, so, okay. So uh, I'll okay. call Brother Sean. Yeah, go, you want to put something on it? Mm-hmm. Uh, I'd just like to address something else. Sure I've been thing. seeing a lot of quote unquote Aboriginal people now all of a sudden talking about UCC and all this bullshit. I mean, what the fuck Friendly. was all that when this shit was being talked about? This, that, or the other. And this shit been talked about and exposed. Now we got <clears throat> Aboriginal people talking about it like it's brand new. Oh, uh, that's very disappointing. That's disappointing. Yeah, the, I hope they're not the one, selling packages and stuff. Well, the one brother from King Drop, he allegedly, I guess, just got out of jail or whatever, Lord. and he put some videos talking about UCC, this, that, and other, because I guess he's still trying to get out of whatever trouble he's in. What I'm saying is, majority of these quote-unquote younger aboriginals that ain't been in no type of legal trouble, this, that, or the other. That's what I'm saying about all that paperwork. They filing this paperwork, putting the aboriginal or American Indian or whatever on it, and thinking that they're about to get off on some stuff. That's and still getting locked have, up. Right. Then when they get hit upside their head, they go back to Moorish doctrine. Even though they talked about the Moors, they're pushing the same damn paperwork the Moors push. People need to stop with the confusion. They really, 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 really need to stop with the confusion. Stay out of these people's courts. Don't put yourself in a situation where you can get locked up. Uh, wow, somebody, I didn't know that. Yeah, I, I saw a couple of videos. He had three-part video going about that. And it's never oh going to work when you're using somebody else's shit. It ain't never going to work. Right. It's the system, period. It, was, it wasn't meant for any of that stuff to work. That's what I don't understand what people get. It's the system, period. That's what has to go. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Not bits and pieces of it, the entire system. Oh, the system. entire system. Absolutely. And once again, you know, I'm, I'm hoping that with the series that we're doing, um, you know, on the black nobility and the Americas, that melanated people can enter and understand where this system came from. White folks didn't put this system in place. This is a European system that were put that was put in by the original founding fathers of the colony. So they wasn't recognizing you as indigenous back then. They didn't give a shit back then, and they don't give a shit now. So, again, I, as I keep saying every week, sovereignty and freedom starts in the mind. If you want to keep messing around in these people's system, then you just, you might as well go on out there with your check that you can repay your car note and rent and shoot a game of a goddamn crap. I mean, really, you probably have better odds. So it, it's on you. I don't know how many people have to be locked up messing around in these folk system. So, good point. Thank you, Brother Sean. I, I did not realize that that was going on. Wow. <sighs> it is what it is. Okay, family. So we're going to pick up... Uh, with we're going to be in um, book number six, the, the Negro Question, part six, uh, the 13 colonies. I think the 13 black colonies. 
I think I went over this before, but just to hone back in over uh, this one portion, but I didn't get to the charters. But I just want to remind us of when these colonies and stuff was formed and was formed by who. Okay, so the five, sorry, y'all, I'm just so hoarse. Dang, I mm, apologize. The five black founding fathers of the 13 colonies. Uh, now, this starts on 160, page 160. King James Stewart, King Charles the First Stewart, King Charles the Second Stewart, King James Second. King George the Third. All right, so those are the five founding fathers of the thirteen colonies. All right, so here we go. 1607, Virginia was founded by Black Scott King James the First. 1620, Massachusetts, Maine, founded by King James the First. 1620, New England, founded by King James I. 1632, Maryland, founded by King Charles I. 1629, New Hampshire, founded by King Charles I. 1636, Rhode Island, founded by King Charles II. 1638, Delaware, founded by King Charles II. 1663, North Carolina, founded by King Charles II. 1636, Connecticut, founded by King Charles II. 1681, Pennsylvania, founded by King Charles II. 16, uh, 81, okay, I, let me re-re-read that because I got one of them messed up. 1636, Connecticut, founded by King Charles II. 1681, Pennsylvania, founded by King, Jar- King Charles II. 1663, South Carolina, founded by King Charles II. 1664, King James II, Duke of York, founded New Jersey. 1732, Georgia, founded by black Germans, King George II. Okay. Um, let me see if there's anything else on this do, 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 before we go on to the other ones. Okay, the only colony that was not founded by a black Scottish Highlander Highlander king. Because remember all of those that I just read, all of those five melanated kings of the same bloodline were also known as the Highland the Highlanders. The only colony that was not founded by a black Scottish Highlander king was the Georgia colony. Um, I have to mention this in my conclusion to close any gaps that the government-sponsored scholars might use against the truth. The Hanover kings were of German descent, and according to Benjamin Franklin's essay, the German Hanovers were a black people. Okay, so he's referring back to Benjamin Franklin's essay in 1751, where he named all of those different nations, France, Sweden, Italy, Russia, um, British, America, China, Japan as being black. Okay, so that's what he's referring to. Um, so Benjamin Franklin wrote this essay in 1751, and at that time, the black German, King George II, was sitting on the throne of England, and that is a fact, okay? And let's also remember that King George was the one that authorized that, that name of Windsor to come into play uh, that we know today, okay? All right. The original translators of the King James Bible, the 1611, made a statement in their introduction on page 164 of this book, and it reads, so that if on the one side we shall be traduced, if they lie on us, by popish persons at home or abroad, who therefore will malign us, 
because we are poor instruments to make God's holy truth to be yet more and more known unto the people whom they desire still to keep in ignorance and darkness. This is what happens to happen to the entire world. We have been kept in the darkness and abject ignorance. All right. Um, so then the rest, you know, I'm really highly recommending you get this book because in, in the the rest of the pages, he goes into providing more proof um, by some documents that discuss the uh, skin color of these different uh, kings that we name. Okay, so I'll pause, sister, brother Sean, if you want to put something on it. And anybody else, uh, you can press star one to get in the queue. Did you, did you notice that you... Okay. Discovered or or, or, or or what you saying? Discovered these different places. Hey, discovery <laughs> lost. Y'all you know I mean that's not lost. I mean seriously. Uh, exactly. And each one did a different discovery. They didn't put it together as the they, one king found the colonies in that because I was under the impression all the time that one king had the thirteen colonies. And then there was uh, some other colonies that was cre- uh, founded later, but all of them was in, and that the 13 colonies was under a um, commerce treaty to do business that was done with the Iroquois. So that's not true? That may have been true at one time. Now, I can't speak to that because um, I know that's some of the doctrine that the Moors talk about. Um, we do know that beforehand, the Dutch had a part of it too, right? So before yeah. the 13 colonies were set into place, the Dutch, which I did co- uh, confirm that the Dutch were also melanated. Because the they, I wasn't sure if the Dutch was melanated back then. And then I ran across some um, some family crests where it clearly shows that the Dutch were even melanated. So I'm saying all that to say, sis, that those particular uh, commerce treaties very well could have been um, with the Dutch or they could have been with part of the Brits before they formed the 13 colonies. Because remember, the Dutch was over here doing business as well as – France, as well as Spain, because remember, France had part of Louisiana, and uh, Spain had uh, Georgia. Okay, they had Texas. Yeah, yeah, Texas. So I'm saying all that to say that those treaties very well could have taken place at a point of time before they wrapped the 13 colonies down. Um, So Mm -hmm. I'm not going to discredit that um, entirely. uh, Well, I know George was considered crazy, so I don't even know why they, uh, you know, because George was trying to take from him, and and they did, they uh, thought he was, so Catherine took over from George, remember? Yeah, because George went crazy, supposedly and allegedly, so yes. Yes. Okay, so let me bring on 612. They have a question or comment. Mm-hmm. 612, your line is open. Yes, sir. Good evening, ma'am. How are you doing? I'm well. How are you? Doing well. Um, I just wanted to bother you guys. I was hoping to be able to talk to someone in, like, not on live here. I just wanted to let you know that um, I don't know if you know, but you're on your blog talk page. Uh, uncompromised is spelled, uh, spelled wrong. I don't know if you No, know. it's not. No, it's not. That's the way I wanted it spelled. You wanted to spell it with a Y? I I have it purposely spelled that way, brother. But why would you spell it wrong on purpose? Because it's my show and I spell it the way I want to spell it. Yeah, but I mean, don't you think it makes your show look kind of bad if you, you spell a word, uh, like, especially like that? 
So if you spell no, it no, it doesn't, because I spell it the way I want to spell it. So now is that your question, or did you have something else to add? But, I mean, how could you have a show based on like, right, trying to make goodbye. that intellectual point? Good David. With that fuckery. Okay, so. That was the best he, he that was the best. He could come with obviously his punk ass and his feelings about something. Oh, of course, I already knew. I already felt. I already knew. I already knew. I I gave him the opportunity. Did I not say, do you have another (laughs) question or comment besides how the fuck I choose to spit? Now, how long have I been on the motherfucking air? Three, four years. I know how the fuck I spelled the word. So call somebody oh, else to show with this bullshit. <laughs> that was interesting. Yeah, here come the trolls. <laughs> Get to the <laughs> question. Fuck out of here. Telling somebody how to they should spell something on their own shit. Get the fuck out of here. All well, right. He's trying to show that your intelligence don't stretch that far, you see. It can't <laughs> stretch that far, stupid ass motherfucker. Pro, P-R-O, I, dumb motherfucker. <laughs> Shit. Well, I guess he don't. I guess he don't listen to hip hop music or nothing like that because they spell everything the way they want it to spell it. <laughs> I wonder how many rappers he. How many rappers is he going on their videos saying that to, or anybody else is spelling shit the yeah, way that they want to spell it? Yeah, here with that bullshit. Bring a legitimate <laughs> question. We t- we on some serious no information question. here. Did you talk about what's on the on the web page? Get the fuck out of here. That's another R. Kelly. That's R. Kelly Jr. <laughs> <laughs> <clears throat> Oh, man. So, anyway, he ain't even worth it. Okay. So, um, we're going to now go into the 13 black colonies. So, we already went over them. And just just to recap, uh, Virginia, 1607, Massachusetts, 1620, New Hampshire, 1623, New York. Now, that's interesting. New York, he has in here twice. 1625 and 1664. Uh, that's interesting. Maryland, 1632. Connecticut, 1638. Island, 1636. Delaware, 1638. North Carolina, 1663. New Jersey, 1664. South Carolina, uh, 1664. Pennsylvania, 1681. Georgia, 1734. I'm sorry, 1732. Okay, so those are the 13 colonies. So, um, we have been taught in the classroom that slavery existed in the 13 colonies, but it is impossible. And I'm on page 47. Again, this is from the wonderful works of Lee Cummings, The Negro Question, Part 6, The 13 Black Colonies. Page 47. We have been taught in the classrooms that slavery existed in the 13 colonies, but it is impossible. There was the Council of the Council of West Westminster 1102 that was held in London that ruled the peculiar institution of slavery was illegal. Okay, so let me take a sip of my little water, y'all. I'm hoarse. The fuckery made me raise my voice even more. Okay, so that kind of blew me away, y'all. So he's saying that the Council of Westminster 1100 was held in London, and it ruled that the institution of slavery was illegal. The English Magna Carta of 1215, and we've talked about that Magna Carta of 1215 a couple of times, held that all men have the right to liberty. Then there was a case in England in 1569 in which a Russian by the name of Cartwright, oh, wow, 
Hmm. Right. I wonder if sis know that that's the origin of that name. That's interesting. I'm going to have to let her know that. Sorry, family. Then there was a case in England in 1569 in which a Russian by the name of Cartwright was seen beating his slave. He was arrested and brought before the courts and tried. The court of England ruled that the institution of slavery is not recognized in England. The reason I have cited all of these cases and laws is to prep you for the truth that slavery was not recognized in England. The black Scottish Stuart Kings wrote in each charter that the laws of the colonies must be consistent with those in England. Okay, so kind of makes sense um, because they really carried the stuff forward today with the system that we see with the courts and the way that they do commerce. All right, so this is the reason why there was no slavery in the original 13 colonies. The first king to break the Magna Carta, yeah, this shouldn't be no surprise to us now, was King George II in 1752. He was not a Scot. He was a black German, okay? Now, remember, he was also the one that sanctioned that Windsor name change, because remember, they went from the Wittens, W-I-T-T-E-N, and they had a messed up reputation in Germany. They really didn't know how to speak the language. So he gave them the legal authority to change over to the Windsor name. So that is the name that we see today. So really the kingdom that is in place today is still of a German lineage. Okay. All right. So here we go again with uh, George and his mess. He was the first king to break the Magna Carta in 1752. He was a black German. Benjamin Franklin said that the Germans were swathy. He's just in, he's just referring back to Benjamin Franklin's essay in 1751. Um which was 19 years after the founding of Georgia. All right, so we're going to go into, so I'll pause in case Brother Sean or Sis, you all want to put something on it. I'm good. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay, sorry. I was giving myself a drink of water at the time, too. All right, so the first Virginia Charter, 1607, um, He's giving you all an official map of New England, which was later named Jamestown. And the man in the upper left-hand corner is John Smith. Um, you will do good to note that Captain John Smith, Smith, Smith was a black Scot. And I shall make that plain to you by uh, blowing up the image on the next page. So that's why I'm encouraging the family to get this book because the brother didn't just make statements he backed it up with his receipts okay and some of the charter states I will deal only with the image but in others I will deal with the non-slavery language of the charters I thought it prudent to forewarn you concerning this perceived subject transitioning so, and I feel the brother on that because melanated people get touchy when we speak on the subject of slavery. Uh, when folks tell you that it didn't happen the way we were being taught, um, you know, so that's a shame the brother had to put it in his book, but it is what it is. Okay, so John Smith, the Highlander. We have been saturated with the white image of John Smith, one of the founders of Jamestown, but he was not white. It is impossible from the testimony of Boy Dawkins and the only life portrait of Captain John Smith that he could be white. According to Professor Dawkins, the blacks were pushed 
and to the highlands of Scotland. The surname or last name Smith belonged to the Chatton clan, C-H-A-T-T-A-N clan which was made up of a confederate of 26 clans. The Chatton clan is from Highlands of Scotland, and Smith was one of those clans. Um, so he's just saying on the next page, he's just giving us a map. Okay, and so on this map, um, it he shows the surnames, and I'm just going to read a few of them so y'all can be humored. Shit, I should have got my little reading glasses, y'all. Damn it. So just <laughs> bear with me. I can't really read them all, family. But this is on page 50 if you um following along. I'm not going to be able to touch them all. But the chatting is on there. Grant is on there. Um, What else is a common one? Um, John Stone is on there. Maxwell is on there, Armstrong is on there, Elliot is on there, Kennedy is on there. Of course, we're going to have some stewards in the building. Campbell is on there. Uh, I don't know if I said Murray, Graham, Gordon, um, McIntosh, Gunn, G-U-N-N, Sutherland, McDonald. Okay, so those are just um, interesting. Carnegie, that's really, really interesting, gal. I used to love them. uh, I'm sorry, go ahead, sis. I said I used to love those Highland Scottish books, you know, in the the, the romance novels. (laughs) They used to talk about how big and burly they were and all that kind of stuff. But you said, but you said that the um, the Stuarts were short people, five foot four, and all that kind of stuff, right? Yeah, that's I think reading. in the earlier description. Yeah, yeah, he said they were short and stout. Yes, short and stout. Hmm. Yeah, short, short and stout. So, I mean, I think a stout just kind of is muscly built. But that's right. just the stewards, you know what I'm saying? That's just the steward. That mm-hmm. don't mean everybody, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. But that's you know it's Yeah, but they, they describe the Scottish people as big people and so I'm just wondering who's these big people they were really talking about. Yeah, it could have been any one of those other particular um mm-hmm. surnames. Could have could have been any of them, you know. Just like the indigenous people over here, you had some that were short and some are tall. I mean, hell, we got them within our own families. Right. You know, you have some that's short and then some that's tall and some that's average. Okay, so he goes on to say, so that's interesting, family. If uh, you get the book and you go on page fifty, um. He's given once again the sur- surnames of this um, the Highlands area, and a lot of melanated folks carry those surnames. A lot of them. Um, okay, so it goes. Um, the Chatton clan was located in the Highlands of Scotland. This is the exact location that Professor Boyd Dawkins, um, page three, said that the blacks inhibited. Um, So it says, this is the copy of the original map of Virginia that was drawn by Simon D. Passe in 1616. This image of John Smith was copied from the original. Um, So he's just uh, going in the next next couple of pages showing you how they lightened up the original um, image of John Smith. And interestingly enough, throughout this book, and that's why I'm just encouraging you all to please get these books. I don't know how long um, his work is going to be in circulation. It is well worth it. Very, very reasonable. Let me bring back Brother Sean back on. Okay, brother, you back. Um, But they're collector's items. So in the book, again, he presents the receipt. 
he pulls these original um, images, and you can see how uh, they lightened up the skin mm-hmm. of the, the melanated people. And then on some of the um, pictures, they couldn't get it all. So, for example, when you had the fingers, they couldn't get all of the fingers. So you'll see, like, in between of the fingers, you'll see black, uh, et cetera. You'll see the, the original skin tone. All right. So now we're going to get in up into Virginia's little charter. Mm. The 1606, y'all. And though, okay, here we go with this original English language. I got to get my mind back to this. <laughs> and and though, therefore, for us, our heirs and successors grant and agree that the said Sir Thomas Gates, Sir George Summers, Richard um, Hacklute and Edward Maria Wing for the adventurers of and for our city of London and all such others as are or shall be joined unto them of that colony shall be called the first colony and they shall and may begin their said first plantation wow and seat of their first abode and habitation at any place upon the said coast of Virginia or America. The charter for Virginia in 1606 was called the first colony. And Mm -hmm. to that end, and for the more speedy accomplishment of their said intended plantation and habitation there are desirous to divide themselves into two several colonies and companies. Okay, so already, you know, they're setting this this stuff up as companies, all right? Okay, and this this stuff still exists today. That's why when, you know, folk tell you that it's all commerce and the United States government, their corporations slash companies, this shit didn't just begin. That's how it was set up out the gate. Okay, so anyway, the one consisting of certain knights, gentlemen, merchants, and other adventurers of our city of London and elsewhere, which are and from time to time shall be joined unto them which do desire to begin their plantation and habitations in some fit and convenient place uh, four and thirty and one and forty degrees of the said latitude. Damn, they even gave the latitude. Damn, all along the coast of Virginia and coast of America, I foresaid, and the other consisting of sundry knights, gentlemen, merchants, and other adventurers of our cities of Bristol and. Exeter and of our town of Plymouth. King James tells you which cities participated in the colonization of Jamestown, Bristol, Exeter, Plymouth, and Cornwall were black towns in Devon. This is huge because these cities are the locations of the blacks that Professor Boyd Dawkins spoke of. All right, so I'll pause in case y'all want to put something on that. So that's the charter, y'all, of um, 1606. Hmm, charter. Yeah. Y'all know what... Uh-huh, go ahead. Since 1913, when the Federal Reserve Act was implemented, we've been under martial law Mm -hmm. and with every executive order that's enacted it's another stage of martial law I mean I know I may be going a little bit off of the charter thing but 
Then again, I'm not because it's all the fucking system. Yes. And uh, these charters are being written by people that's just taken our shit. Mm-hmm. Here, all of this. I mean, I'm I'm actually glad that we're going over all of this because it's all evidence. Yep. And we got first-hand knowledge inside and out, sweating out our pores. How guilty these motherfuckers are. Yes. And. We also know the repercussions. <laughs> yep. Yeah. I know I'm about uh-huh. to enjoy. <laughs> it's it's interesting. Um, I am the universe is in in the chat. Um, always, you know, drop some some great info. Um, at some point, one must examine the word commerce. At some point, one should examine the word merchant. Uh, it says merchant equals mere chant. Uh, example, C chant, mother chant, which is very, very interesting because the water within itself um, is pretty deep. And we're putting together our next show, which we're going to do um, on the Giants, and um, I had ran across some information where they were talking about the whole Atlantis thing and how folks worship these different deities or entities that really are involved with entities and deities of the sea. So that's what that whole uh, Aquaman thing is about, uh, what the whole maritime law is about, etc. And so he's saying mere equals C. Uh, mere is German, Anglo Saxon. So very, very interesting. Thanks. Uh, I am the universe. Mm hmm. That's yes. that ER. If they got that M and R in it, that's more. You know they're going to cuss any and everybody out. Anything with an M and R is more. Well, they, they do that. claim that. They they claim the, 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 the M, the M, the E, the R, the M, U, U, R. The O, the R. They claim the O, the R. Yeah, the, the M, O, R, E, the M, O, O, R, E. So the M O O R. So yeah, they do claim that. Yeah, so, Absolutely. You know, because they said mermaids is more. Yeah, but isn't that? Um, but uh, I am the universe saying that uh, derived from my act. Um, and you know, but claiming that whole mermaid thing isn't that all a part of the? Um, what do you call it? Where I'm trying to go. Mythology of um, the different sea entities and all of that? Or am I just... um, Poseidon and all of them. Yeah, yeah, all of them. All of them. And were they part of the Greek mythology? Yeah, yeah. Okay, Mm -hmm. so did we not get into this where the... um, King James and them claimed the bloodline of the Romans and all of that. It came to him. That's his people. They was black. Yep, yep. That's that's. I didn't make that up. Now that's that's what they saying. So I just find it all really, really interesting in how it all comes full circle. Um. So very good point, brother Sean. All right, family. So that was Virginia Charter of sixteen oh six. So. Important thing to take out of that. Let me just go back to who charters you know, that. Oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead, sis. Go ahead. If, if perchance it's the, the the Romans and they are that, 
there was a takeover by Brutus, the group uh, was, that was following Brutus, when they killed Julius Caesar. And that was um, an overthrow of the whole system of the Caesars at that time. And that that faction of Brutus went on to rule Rome, and not the Julius, uh, not the the James's part of it. That's what I remember. Okay. The Brutus Moors. The Caesar did say "et tu Brute" when all of them were stabbing yeah. his whole ass. Yeah. That's that. That's right. And so that James's part of the situation with Julius Caesar ended at that point. What do you mean James's part ended at that point when he's Caesar. claiming that bloodline? Didn't James come after Caesar now? Yeah. No, Caesars were the Jameses, as far as I remember. That was part of the um, the line that James created with the Caesars. Or he came from that Caesar bloodline, but Caesar, right, right, was, right, right, right. Caesar was executed by the Brutus people. I, I just read mm-hmm. it. I remember a documentary of how the Caesar line ended. He was executed the by the Senate when he got back there. He was executed by the Senate. The yeah, he was executed. Turned over. Mm-hmm. And so, um, he was messing very around with point, Cleopatra. I am. Huh? Very good point, I am. He says Caesar simply meant king ruler. So I got to give right. you that. Absolutely. All of them were Caesars still today. Caesar, so he's trying to say like Soros. Well, the Julius, Caesar, so, Julius right. was a name. And that was Julius Caesar's line that Brutus uh, came in. It's, Brutus was another branch of it, I thought, as far as I know. And, and he could be, but nonetheless, whether or not it was Caesar's, Julius's, or Brutus's, King James and them is claiming that bloodline. So I hear your point, but at the end of the day, they're still the Romans. Whether or not they Brutus uh, folk or Julius <clears throat> folk or somebody else's folks, they're still the Romans. And they're showing us. They, they, they haven't changed the way that they do their rulership. But at one point in time, the Romans turned into a non-melanated people And I don't know what point that was But they turned into non-melanated people Because Titus was not a melanated man As far as I know of And his and his son Vestution And all those people were not They were Caesar They were Romans But they were not melanated at some point Because they're the ones who sacked The so-called Jerusalem Okay, so even if that's even if that's the case, then you explain to me how King James and them got on the throne, and all of those other melanated folks. Well, as you said in the beginning, King James went in there and took down the melanated people that were already there. Um, but I, I I can't tell you. All I know is the Golden Horde came down. And took over and killed a lot of the melanated people. Now that's all I know about, and that's where I okay. keep saying that, the, you know, that that part happened at that moment. You know what I'm saying? And um, I don't know when all so, so of what, Europe. What happened with the white people? Because we 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 we're gonna be clear. We're not gonna. I want to be very clear. So what happened to the white people that took over back then in Rome? What happened to them? They're still there, as far as I know of. They they haven't no, been, no, no, been. No, 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 no. What happened to them? Because all of Rome was black back then. No, I think the question is what happened to the black people? Because Rome no, now that's, is that's not, that's not my question. Because you said. That back then, the white people came 
came and took over. Right. So I'm asking what happened to them for the black people, King James in them line, to have been sitting on those thrones. So what happened to those white people back then? I don't really follow. If we were originally melanated, this whole planet was melanated, and King James came up and took over other melanated people's position, then the the golden horde, which was the the Asian Mongol, took over from them, and they're still in power. Okay, so when did they take over for them? Because I, as we're presenting this information, sis, I want us to be clear on what we're talking about. Now, I'm not saying you have to give exact dates, but you have to at least give some type of reference, some type of time frame. Well, I know that Leo the Tenth was a was a European, and they are the ones who put up this uh, under Titus, or really after Titus, when they ro- they marched into the uh, French um, Roman tree. What is that ro- um, under that arch in France? And they had that the relief of Titus coming into France. Uh, Leo came in with the doctrine of Christianity and the Jesus doctrine. And that's when uh, Artemis, no, 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 not Artemis. What is his name? Okay, uh, so what time frames are we talking about? Centuries well, I'm looking, at, I'm looking at the Nicene Council. When, uh, when um, what's his name? Good God. Um, that guy, uh, um, Constantine, okay, and- under Constantine. Time. Okay, so what I need you to do then, because you brought this up, not me. You <laughs> brought this up. Bring your receipts next week. Bring your receipts and tie it into what we're talking about tonight. And the reason I'm doing this, not to be hard on you, but yeah, kind of to be hard on you. Because That's all right. we have to I can stop making general, some of the history. generalizations. Yeah, yeah, bring your receipts so we can tie it into what we're talking about up till today, because that's how we got in the mess that we're in now, because, and you know, folks throw stuff out there, and it's related to some, something else, and so just bring your receipts next week, and we'll do the recap and tie into, um, tie it into what we've been speaking on for seven weeks. So, uh, uh-huh. I mean, considering that we're talking about how these people lied about everything. They can have lied about that history, what, too, we're talking about. They put a thousand years on the calendar. Right. We know that they intentionally whitewashed up and claimed to be people who they were not. Now, what I'm saying is everybody keeps trying to make the Caesars and all of them people that done all that fucked up shit trying to right. make them white. Right. Then when people find out that they're black, they love them. Oh, that's my dude. You know Caesar and them was black in the motherfucker, nigga. <laughs> right. But forget all of the, the, the fucked up shit they did. Now yeah. you want to rep uh, Team Caesar and them. And see, that's what yeah, we that's talk about, the accountability. Yo. Exactly. Yeah, that's my exactly. Yo, I, did, I found it on Ancestry and shit, yo. <laughs> right. Well, I know the time frame was AD 70, 70 AD, when that uh, so-called Romans uh, sacked Jerusalem. Okay, so that you ain't going to get off that easy, sis. I won't, I won't receive <laughs> I won't find All right, I Alex. And have, yeah, no, no, no. You now you done you done set up and brought it up. So now yeah, know. you have I, to okay, okay. So you know how that works, so cool. Yeah. I'll have to look <laughs> it up because I remember yeah, Franklin paper was wrote when, sir? What you say, uh, brother Sean? Benjamin Franklin paper was wrote when? He said seventeen fifty one. 
1751. And everybody was best. The Romans a long time, if that's the case. Everybody was best. That's why I'm being hard on sis. That's why I want her to prove, prove it to me. Prove it to me that white people had it back then. How did they get it back then when they didn't have shit? So bring oh, the yeah, receipt. Oh, yeah, but sis. Mm-hmm. Guess what, though, sis? Uh-huh. All white people are Tartarian. They are just Oh, yeah, yeah, my bad. That's my bad. They had Russia, right? Because it's yeah, that, like that's tar- state, tar- that's, tar- that's a new thing. Tartarian right. is the new moor. That's the white moor. Yeah, my, my bad. <laughs> oh, the whole, the whole got- white world was Tartarian. Right. And all these lives came about and divided them and made them yep. all type of other people. Yep. I, I was too through when they came out. I was going along with them with the Tartarian stuff. I was listening to them. And two dude came out with Oh, when they were all right. Oh, well, that's when I know you telling the bold face ass lie right there, bruh. So, <laughs> yeah. So we 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 on receipts. We on receipts. So okay. All right. So um, damn y'all, my bad. I had got it. So Virginia Charter set sixteen oh six was chartered. And by the way, family, just so you know. Charter means authorization. Okay. Authorization to do business, um, authorization of a contract. Okay, so um, yeah, I n- always knew what it meant, but uh, part of my profession, before I could legitimately start a project, I always have to have a charter that is authorized. So as we start doing this research and I started digging into these charters, I'm like, oh, shit. That's where the origin of that word charter came from, deep. Okay, so uh, just to be clear, who authorized the charter uh, Virginia, that was King James the first, 1606. All right, so the second colony of Plymouth. Um, and we do likewise for us, our heirs and successors, by these presents grant and agree that the said Thomas Han- Hanum, um, Raleigh, Gilberty, William Parker and George Popham and all others of the town of Plymouth in the county of Devon. Uh, So he goes into Devon, how they were all melanated earlier in this book. Uh, So here are some of the names of the leaders of the Virginia colony, right? So those of you from Virginia, pay attention, love because these names should probably sound much more familiar to you. The surnames is what I'm referring to. So you got the Cornwall, Thomas Gale Cornwall, George Summers Cornwall, Richard Hacklute Welch, Edward Maria Wingfield Welch, and Raleigh Gilbert Cornwall. All of these men's last names, place their origin origination in the black highland of Scotland and that is a fact all right uh so let me see where he's going here I'm trying to get to the, all of the colonies all right he talks about Nantucket founded in 1623 um all right, and he's throughout this book, family, he's giving receipts, he's showing you coins, images, all of that. So he's saying Tristram Coffin, founder of Nantucket, and that's the image that he's given us. This coin reads, these are the first of the race to settle America and is dated to the year 1642. This black man purchased Nantucket, small county in Massachusetts, from Thomas May- Mayhew, 
and he also owned, <coughs> excuse me, Tucker Nuck Island in 1660. The name Tristram owned Tucker Nut Island. Sorry, I, y'all didn't reread the same damn thing. The name Tristram can be traced back to uh, Devon and Cronwall, which was the location of the Black Brit- Britons and Scots. Professor Boyd Dawkins stated that the Blacks were pushed into Cornwall and Devon. Yep. Tristram Coffin name can be traced to Cornwall and Devon. Um, this is what I call a perfect match. All right. And so let me see. Forgive me. I'm just trying to get to the meaty stuff here. La, 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 la. Um, okay. So we're going to get to New York Charter, 1664. King James. The Duke of York, Duke of Albany, King of Scotland and England, 1664. Uh, So he's showing a portrait of him. This image of the Duke of York depicts him as a black Scottish king. He was named after King James VI of Scotland. The Duke of York was granted these lands by his brother, King Charles II. New York, the land between Connecticut, Delaware, Long Island, Martha's Vineyard, Nantucket, and half of Maine. This is the reason the book was titled The 13 Black Colonies, because based on the research, the original founders were four black Scottish kings and one black German king. So remember, um, King George II is the German, and that's how that German line we see today, the Windsors sit on the throne. All right, so let me get to uh, Brother 832. Let me bring him on. Peace and love, brother. How are you? Brother! (laughs) Sandra! My sisters from other misters! Feathers up. Feathers up. Feathers up, brother. Foreign invaders down. <laughs> Sean, my brother from another mother on Mount Jesus. Olympus. Throwing black lightning folks down tonight. You came out with fire and brimstone. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. <laughs> And, you know, I wanted to try to ease some of your pain, my sister, with uh, somewhat cleaning up the timeline, if you could. I might stray a little bit, sort of this, uh, top off the top of your head, stream of consciousness. And remind me, before I forget, I was going to read from the Pocket Constitution of the United mm. States, 1787. Okay. However, mm. uh, please correct me if I'm in error. When you did demonology... About 1606, did not King James travel to the Americas? Yes, sir, he did. what we call North America? Yes, sir, he did. So then the 1606 charter would be a fact-finding mission, maybe? Mm -hmm. Mm-hmm. Using contemporary language? Yes. And and here's the other thing for your consideration. It's somewhat frustrating to me that all of our conversations are contemporarily projecting on an ancient time where what we consider black and white melanation, demelanated or whatever, is not necessarily what was the case back in those times. They didn't differentiate people by skin tone. Mm -hmm. And also those folks may have been such a minority, as in albinism is a rare occasion. You follow me? I mean, we don't. Really, you don't take that into context, obviously, when we're talking about this stuff. We just keep putting our mentality back on a time frame that we really can't relate to and how these Mm -hmm. people existed and coexisted. That's one thing. Secondly, um, and I'm putting these parallel, but this is in the context of a timeline. The Dutch and the Iroquois Confederacy, Sister Sandra was referencing, 
that treaty was 1613. And by the way, it is the technically the longest uninterrupted and acknowledged by the so-called Caucasoid Europeans because King Elizabeth, Queen Elizabeth herself, and they make designations like you just referenced. They said Queen of Canada, which again is referencing that the British Commonwealth and the British Empire still exist in 2010 when they paid homage to this treaty, which was between the Iroquois Confederacy and the Dutch. Okay? Right. So King James's Charter is 1606. I don't remember all the dates that you laid out of those 13 colony references, but I think the latest date you had was, what, about 1730, 1732? Uh, I think you write seventeen. That, that would be about 32. New Jersey or maybe, or I, I can't remember which one was the last one. The Georgia, oh, Georgia. Georgia was okay, 1732. So Georgia, mm-hmm. Okay. So now, remember when he came here and it extended a charter to Virginia, Virginia, we have to have one of these ancient maps that we don't have because it's hard to do something visual when you're talking over the phone or doing like a radio show. People can't right. visualize what the yep. map and the existence of the landmass was there. Virginia covered almost from Canada to the tip of Florida. Makes Ooh, sense. Wow. Makes sense. But that was what he was professing. Don't forget, when we're talking about the Iroquois Confederacy, we're talking about Five tribal nations, I think Mohawk and Seneca were also included. The Iroquois may have been a tribe, but they used the Iroquois title to talk about a confederacy of five to six tribal nations. Mm -hmm. They were in contact with the Dutch, and the Dutch then called it New Amsterdam. I'm saying this to wrap up back to where you said New York. Okay, yep. New York was yep. taken away from the Dutch. Now, yep. what was the date that you said that that charter was created? Uh, like uh, the New York something? one? Uh, 1664. And thank you for that, brother, because um, I Am the Universe just dropped in the chat that New York used to be New Amsterdam. Um, so, because, sorry, again, okay. what, we're not keep, what we're not keeping in context is timeline who the parties involved, the right. Dutch and the Portuguese preceded the Spaniards. Then the yes. Spaniards took over from the Portuguese presence. They dominated after the Portuguese, but the Portuguese came first after Columbus in the late 1400s, around 1492 and the early mm-hmm. 1500s. You have to keep in mind for almost a century was Portuguese and Spanish invaders. Right. The British were basically the late Johnny come late to in the 1600s. And so what they were doing, this is about, you know, white supremacy, patriarchal domination among so-called what we think today, Caucasoid Europeans, but they may have been dark-skinned individuals. Mm-hmm. See what I'm saying? So we're not, mm-hmm. it's hard to see, and we don't have facts because we can't say what they were. We don't have images made of them. Now, you might find it very interesting now that you notice it's being brought up a lot by Dane that there's a lot of antiquity documenting the copper colored Aboriginal inhabitants. So they made a lot of effort and intention of identifying the people they came in contact from North, Central, and South America were very much in comparison to themselves, more darker skin. You see mm-hmm. what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So the 1400s, late 1400s, 1500s, up until the 1606 charter predates the English invasion that we're focusing on, okay? Mm-hmm. Those Spaniards, Portuguese, maybe a minute portion of French, because the French spent most of their time over in Africa. Supposedly, that's where you get Algiers and, and and Morocco and a lot of the French influence on the northern parts or North Africa we know refer to it today. But the Portuguese were the precursors for doing worldwide navigation. And remember, we always have to remember 
it was African Moor navigators on every one of those, right, John? Every one of those <laughs> explorers' excursions, <laughs> African Moor or whatever you want to call them, Iberian. Right, data was it taught them everything I, that they know. Benjamin Boniker. Also, it, they turned the Commonwealth of Virginia. And then some of the people overlook where the Amish originally from and why they stayed that, that's, the Pennsylvania, that's in the Pennsylvania area as well as the Quaker. That's in the Pennsylvania mm-hmm. area. So mm-hmm. but the reason why I'm pointing this out, so I'm saying when you lay this timeline out, Ron, when you're referring to those after 1606, any of these colonies are carved out of Virginia. Mm-hmm. Now, that makes I have sense. Heard this that before, makes sense. I had heard this before with R.B. Bay, you know, Roz Mariah and Todd uh-huh. Tariq, about how these charters came to be. You may want to pick up a piece of that, because I think they still have that place on their website, about how all those charters came out of the original Virginia colony charter. Now, the Massachusetts Bay aspect of it, because I think, you know, it's hard to kind of keep all these things in line and doing them mm-hmm. parallel. That was a competing company, was it not, Sean? You have the Virginia yeah. Colony thing, which is the initial charter, but then you have the Massachusetts Bay Colony where you start getting this crap like the Pilgrims and the Puritans and mm-hmm. all these other uh, foreign invading groups, some of which right. we've been taught in our in his story classes were for religious persecution. But what were they in truth? They were debtor prisoners. Yep. This is when, starting under James all the way through George the Third, the one that we we're focused on about the rebellion and the revolution in, mm-hmm. in the late 1770s, mm-hmm. were cleaning out their prisons. Do you remember what happened in the 80s, early 80s with Castro? We call it the Marielito because I'm from oh, Miami. Oh, yeah. I he dumped all that. his prisoners um, Literally, in Florida. Literally. Mm-hmm. Uh, okay, so all he did was follow their example. Okay, so everybody goes and dumps their prisoners on our doorstep, and the first thing they do is come here and steal our land. Mm-hmm. Okay, just keep just keep that in mind in all of the discussion we have. So when you step through these timelines from 1606 to 1732, each one of these 13 colonies were, and again, in their mind, them carving up. My shit, like Sean said. I, I hear you, brother. They're going to they gonna set up stakes and settlements inside the original Virginia Charter. So when you look at each and every city, township, village, municipality, and county in the so-called United States of America, they all originate out of that original 1606 Makes Charter. Sense. So that's the reason why I'm pointing that out for Thank once. you. Two, uh, inside this invading force, because, see, this is what our problem with most of what we're discussing. When you said the things you said earlier about we have to take back our situation, we have to become responsible for it, we have to stop swapping out God, religious concepts, and all these other things. But, again, remember, we are having a discussion in a foreign tongue. Mm-hmm. All our thoughts are originating in this foreign language, which, by the way, is kind of like being poisoned. You know, so so everything we think and everything we be, we be doing the way they have constructed and designed. All right. So using that example, speaking in that foreign tongue from their document, the so-called United States Constitution. I'll read the preamble first quickly. We the people of the United States, in order to form a more perfect union, establish justice. Ensure domestic tranquility, provide for the common defense, promote the general welfare, and secure the blessings of liberty to ourselves, to ourselves, keep that in mind, and our posterity. Do ordain and establish this Constitution for the United States of America. Now, inside Article 1, Section 2, this is a section that talks about representation in the Congress. This is the first part of the Constitution. 
the powers given to the House of Representatives are the closest to what is considered we the people, okay? And those persons representing them through electoral process is based on this definition. Representatives and direct taxes shall be apportioned among the several states that may be included within this union according to their respective numbers, which shall be determined by adding to the whole number of free persons, keep that in mind, adding to the whole number of free persons, including those bound to service for a term of years, and we have contemporary terms described as indentured servitude, excluding, I stress, and excluding Indians not tax. How many times have I brought that up to you in the past few weeks about our company? Yeah, every, every time. Three-fifths of all other persons. Now, we need to break this down real quickly here. There are four identified populations in that representation reference for the union. Three persons, and if you want to get busy with it, get jiggy with it, as Will Smith used to say. It's very specific. They have identified that as white, male, over 21, free, and land-owning, correct? Mm -hmm. So then the ones that are not free would be what? Bound to service for a term of years? Now, people have to understand, when you're talking indentured servitude, they weren't all white people. Right. Some of these Moors are what we're talking about. Some of these Africans. Yes, Some right. of these other people who we are now calling Mongoloid, mm-hmm. Caucasoid, Fine Allah hybrids. Of what, mm-hmm. if you notice, they don't call them Native. Uh, they call them Native Americans. They don't call them Negro Indians. Right. Okay. Then you have Indians not taxed, which are excluded. Comma. Three-fifths of all other persons. Now, who are the other persons? You notice that, you'll read, when you read this, and it says also at the bottom with an italics, this asterisk says, changed by the 14th Amendment, that representation aspect that I just read to you, changed by Section 2 of the 14th Amendment, by the way, which the 14th Amendment was ratified on July 9, 1868. You know what they still <laughs> reference? in that ratification of the 14th Amendment, Indians not taxed. Mm. Now, as you pointed out, the 13 colonies, New Hampshire, Massachusetts, Connecticut, New York, New Jersey, Pennsylvania, Delaware, Maryland, Virginia, North Carolina, South Carolina, and Georgia. We need Mm -hmm. to lay out again those 13 with those 13 dates that you talked about tied Mm -hmm. to those four English, one German monarch that are trying to bestow authority on foreign soil. Right. Now, do that in reverse. Would that stand? Would that stand if our Aboriginal ancestors, who have, by the way, have been doing business with those Africans for those Moors to navigate over here, we had to have been in contact and have been doing we commerce have to have. and trade. Okay, absolutely. For very, okay. Now, now, why didn't we go over there and set down stakes and carve up their shit? What did you say about this, Sean, how many times? Often? They ain't have shit? Yeah. <laughs> they were just deforested, <laughs> depopulated. They, they lived in northern the whole world still, hmm? The whole world still surviving off of this place. Pretty much. So when we identify, and I'll, I'll tie it up with this, as she pointed out, the Iroquois Confederacy, if you believe, it's a, it's a brother called J. Winter Nightwolf that talks, I forgot what tribal nation he represents, but again, it's one of these, you know, what you would look at as a so-called mongoloid or a Syrian, as Sister Sandra accurately describes, said that over 627 treaties, again, Negotiated with rogue, renegade individuals. Because remember, they only civilized five tribes, right? Mm-hmm. And each one of those five civilized tribes, Chickasaw, Creek, Cherokee, Seminole, Choctaw, they all 
emulated and ate the European Caucasoid with slave systems right. and Christianity. Right. Who the hell were the uncivilized tribes? <laughs> and who are the Indians not taxed? And I can't stress this enough because it states very clearly in the Constitution that we were excluded. Does that not by default say we do not fall under jurisdiction? And as my brother, throwing his black lightning bolt, said to them ignorant mofos walking out of the jail cell, trying to climb back in to something that's stated very explicitly and ratified again in 1868, July the 9th, that Indians not taxed are excluded, and all other African Moor mofo persons are what? <laughs> Three-fifths. Those are the others. Three-fifths. Yep. All other persons. Now, I don't know, my sister. I just, I'm just making an observation. Please correct me <laughs> if I'm wrong, and I yield. All right, brother. Thank you so much, Brother 832. Uh, you brought it home. Love you much, and thank you for coming in and shedding some more light on the Iroquois, uh, that treaty, and the region, because that makes a lot of sense of what you were saying. Now, um, I am universe uh, in the chat through some gems, so let me just, let me go back up. Dang, I hope they didn't get rid of it. I'm scrolling back up, because he, and forgive me if you're not a brother, I think that you are. Um, Damn it, I don't have it anymore. Damn, 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 damn. Um, He was saying, and I'm trying to remember what you were saying in the chat when you were talking about York is derived from uh, the civilization of Rome So that word York Is derived from the civilization Of Rome uh, He was saying that it uh, That particular region Was like the upper crust And dealt with the financial System Back in Rome So hopefully mm-hmm. now We enter and overstand That's some powerful ass information He dropped on that because it makes sense why they changed New York. It was New Amsterdam when the Dutchnam had it, and I have forgot that. You're right. It was New Amsterdam when the Dutchnam had it. Then came in, which are the Romans. That's what they said. I didn't say that. That's what they said. But that name York is derived from Rome. And it's associated with financial. Uh, And he came back. York was the westernmost point. Throne. Financial. Love you, I am the universe. York was the westernmost point. Throne. The financial center of the Roman Empire. So now I'm going to pause. What is the financial empire in the Americas? And actually, folks say of the world now. I'll pause New as York. I sit my water. Wall Street, New York. Exactly. Exactly. And look exactly. how many and look how many movements you got coming up out of New York that's policing people. Oh my God! They the masters of it. <laughs> That's a Babylon. Yep. Yep. And yep. also, and it, I'm sorry. Go ahead, Brother Sean. It makes me wonder about the royalty allegedly fleeing over here and getting shipped over here as. Prisoners or exiles Right Because when they got here They still damn sure had the good Oh yeah They lived it up What you talking about Absolutely Now the the, uh, brother Cummings Don't go into that But we see evidence That they lived it up well And every place they went they integrated, they mixed their bloodline. Exactly. With the indigenous people of the land. So that's why... You know, the, the 
cause division. And that too. And that's why uh, melanated people have those surnames. Mm-hmm. Just like when, um, and I know uh, Dorie, I asked her to do some research. I'm going to have to reach out to her because, and she'll know what I'm talking about. Anybody from the shop will know what I'm talking about from Chicago, where um, DuSabo was known as owning prominent land in Chicago. Specifically, uh, I don't know all that he owned, but I do know over there by the Shed Aquarium. Y'all from Chicago, y'all know what the hell I'm talking about. Uh, the Shed Aquarium and um, the where the, the Bears football stadium, Soldier Field. I'm not making this bullshit up. You can go look it up yourself. That Soldier Field, the original Soldier Field is built just like a Roman Colosseum. All of that land sits right there close on the coast. Now, DuSabo, I think his name was John Baptiste DuSabo, French, Frenchman, okay, melanated man. Now, they don't even try to hide that in Chicago. That's not even a hidden fact. But the story that they say in the shy is that he married an Indian woman. That's how he got all of that land. Prime property in Chicago. And I don't know how much, how many acres uh, he owned. I would have to go back and look that up. But prime property um, area, but if you look at Soldier Field family and they've uh, built it up, but they kept the original structure of Soldier Field, it is literally built like a Roman Colosseum. You still see the columns, the base on that shit, and all of that. So I'm saying all of that to say that Roman Empire is embedded totally into the United States because it's the same people at the end of the day. So uh, very, very good point, Brother Sean. Very good point. Okay. Um, All right. Where did I end off at? Okay. So we talked about New York Charter of 1664, and that was with King James. Um. Oh, my bad. So, y'all, we was getting to the Dutchman part. I apologize. But I'm glad that um, Brother 832 brought that up. Thank you. I am the universe. Um, So it says, the colonization of New York had to be split between the Dutch, French, and the English. The French colonized New York in 1524. And the Dutch uh, in 1626. In that year, there was a population of 7,000 to 8,000 inhabitants. Let's see who the Brits or the British sent in to colonize New York. All right, so it says in the year 16, and this is from an author, Helen. Ansley Smith. In the year 1664, there were 7,000 Dutchmen besides the real Dutch, Prussians, Bohemians, French, Swedes, Norwegians, Danes, and 5,000 English, including Scots, Welsh, and Irish. And the author says, can I prove that these people were black? Yes, I can. So he going to take y'all back. Benjamin Franklin's little essay when, uh, and I'm not going to read it again because we should know this shit by heart by now. <laughs> he said, why should the Palatine Moors be suffered to swarm into our settlement? So in other words, he didn't want the Moors coming over to the Americas. They will never adopt our customs any more than they can obtain our complexion. All of Africa, Asia, and America's, America are swathy, black. 
Russia, Italy, Spain, France, Swede, and the Germans are black. The principal whites are made up of the Saxon and the English. Um, okay, and we know that by that the Saxon line is where they were mixing white folk into their line. Because I found some of the um, crests of the Saxons from back in the day, and they were melanated people on the that Saxon throne as well. Okay, so they were um, dipping and dabbing, and so that's how on the Saxon side you have the the whites coming into play. All right, uh, let me see, let me see, let me see. Um, he says, when Benjamin Franklin writes this essay in 1751, the black German king, King George II, which he was the one that put the Windsors in the mix, is sitting on the throne of England. Okay, so uh, we're going to go over the new Plymouth Charter of 1629. This is issued by King James the Sixth of Scotland, and it goes in ev- in all and every or any of which said great and general court so assembled, we do for us our heirs and successors. So notice, y'all. Sorry, let me take a sip. These mofo's are something else. Now they then came and took the indigenous people shit. Okay, so they may have started out with a treaty with the Iroquois Nation to do commerce, but they didn't drew up their own little contracts, fought with each other, European nations fought with each other over the territories on the Americas, cut deals with each other to carve up this land. Then they had the nerve to put out charters. And state in those charters not only the boundaries, but also state that their heirs and successors would still own those particular lands, lands that they're not even indigenous to, to just show you how this deep, deep this runs. But then again, we have to think about it also that the Romans... That's what they did. They're conquerors. They went around the planet taking folks' shit, setting up their establishment. So all of this is still Rome. Rome never failed. It never failed. That's why we can still make the comparisons of uh, the U.S. corporation to Rome because it it never left. Same empire. Okay, so let me um, bring on 661, just a second. 661, your line is open. Hello? Hey, peace and love, brother. How are you? Oh, peace and love. How you doing? I'm good. I'm good. Good to hear your voice. Yeah, everything, I just wanted to say, everything that's on this show and everything that's being said is actually truth. Um, I've been doing a lot of pulling documents, paperwork, reading through the cracks and the crevices, and um, I found out the stories. I have those books that you were speaking about. I have them in my uh, wonderful office. Good. And, um, good. Yeah, I have, them, I have them just for safekeeping, you know. And I also found out that um, some of the stuff that they've even talked about, the brother was talking about the house and the manufacturing mm-hmm. of goods. Well, the birth certificate is a warehouse receipt. Mm-hmm. And remember in the book of Deuteronomy 28, he says that at the very last, last, last part, where he's talking about how you're going to be in your storehouses and ain't nobody going to buy you. So 
you're going to be bond men and bond women, and ain't mm-hmm. no, no one going to buy you. And then a little mm-hmm. bit further up, he talks about the storehouses. Well, the word house as a symbolism of the White House or the House of Representatives, the warehouse receipt. So when they put brothers and sisters in prison, they're calling you mm-hmm. warehouse goods. Like if you look up the word uh, uh, lean of warehouse, mm-hmm. the lean of warehouse talks about uh, bailing people out. Mm-hmm. Talk, they're talking about putting liens on property. Right. So, it's commerce. Right. So we don't understand this concept in our, in our mind because we're looking at it as, oh, I'm just going to take these charges and I'm going to accept them, so on and so forth. So what they did, they instituted Babylon, um, the old Babylon, and recreated and put their name at the top, U.S. Corporation. So this is the confusion that we still haven't echoed in our minds. I'm kind of going off topic in another way, but this is what's going on in our heads and in our minds. The brother was right. What they did, they all got together and they franchised us out by creating bearer bonds through Abraham Lincoln. Abraham Lincoln was doing 6% on the bond, giving 6% on each slave on the head. And so what they did, instead of instituting those bonds on one, uh, on just us, they instituted the bonds or the warehouse receipts on all of us. So they're trading and bartering our bodies and making our money off of commodities. See, a lot of people going to jail because they're trying to make money off of the bond. You can't do it because they cloaked it. So that's that saying when it says, well, no one shall buy you. They don't have to physically put you in slavery no more because even in the 13th Amendment that they turned corporatization under Abraham Lincoln under um, the the Libra codes, the Libra codes came before the Emancipation Proclamation, and so these are the issues that we're not understanding. That the Proclamation has no authority, but the Libra codes do. So if you read the word Libra codes, it talks about the battle in the field. So what are we on? We're on the field. They keep it all commerce. They keep everything conjuncted. They've taken over New York. They even created laws at one point in New York City to where they we were all when we all used to gather our, our relatives and everybody used to have big meetings out there. They ran us out. Times Square or or the that big old Central Park that was our meeting ground, mm-hmm. and they ran us out. They made laws and pushed us out. So they started spreading us out from different areas because. Um, like uh, like I watched this documentary, they said the reason why they took over those areas is because there's a frequency and a vibration in those locations. Like um, I even found out too as well that Dendra is not the real one over there in the east. The one the the the, the tower of Dendra is over here in the west, and they brought it over here. But they got a fake over there, or either one. It probably was already here, and they made a a simulation over there. So like Chicago, New York, they took all of those areas because they knew that's where our central energy was coming from, and that's where we vibe from. So now let's go back to the part where they ain't going to buy us no more. They don't buy us no more. They ship us. So when they put us into those prisons, they warehouse us up and they lock us in those boxes. And we're thinking right when we sign that paper, when we go into them and to the counties, they're actually telling you that they're shipping you off because you have a person that's registering you in, you sign it, he gives you the pink, pink or yellow is one of the two. They got a video camera on the in the prisons or in the jails right before you walk in, you have a a, a, a sheriff which is under common law, watching you as though they ship off the goods. Mm -hmm. And that's where the problem with Babylon starts. 
It's a it's yep. a it's a echoing confusion. Yep. It's it's commerce. Bottom line, it's commerce. It's commerce. And yes. people are burying themselves in the paperwork trying to get behind their two book system. Right. So I don't Very disagree so. with anything that you say. Not at all. Yeah. But most people that are messing around with paperwork, they haven't dug that far. They got to keep digging. And, and you can't stop. You can't just stop off of one definition because you feel that you think you're the king of that definition. They, they don't put this thing so deep in, in, in lock and key. And they instituted all out of New York City. I mean, there's West Babylon, there's East Babylon in New York. They even put it on CNN to tell you where Babylon is. Mm-hmm. They don't. They don't pretend that it ain't there. They put it right in front of your face to let you know that you there in Babylon and where you stand. So when I went to New York years and years ago, New York has a strange aura over it. The people are very aggressive and rude. I'm over here <laughs> in California. People are gr- rude, but they ain't that rude. That was a different type of rude. <laughs> yeah, New York is it, it's definitely a, a different energy. But, I mean, you you already know about the ley lines, and they keep the Tower of Babel there. That's what I call the Twin Towers. They knock that shit down, right. and then they put up the One Tower a babble. So it is what it is. And at the end of the day, you could keep playing and, and their game with them with their paperwork and their contracts and them trying to cast spells or you can break and, out of those spells. And, and, and for those who you know get back sorry, to nature. But I'm and sorry, go ahead. I'm New done. York is a, and you and you know New York is the eleventh state in the union. So that's another form of manifestation. Right. 11 is manifestation. Right. Yes. You know, even if you count New York City has 11 letters in it. Right. If you put, right. If you put the two towers together, it symbols 11. So they're doing numerology or anything of that nature to um, control the masses. And guess where our birth certificates and our stock markets and everything are being held at? In Babylon. Remember they remember Babylon became a a, a a place of whores? Right. Mystery Babylon. So now right. if you go into Babylon now, Babylon got an attitude. And it's very mean. It's very aggressive. Right. It ain't it ain't the same Babylon as it used to be. Right. Well and very good came from New York too. Right. Yeah. Right, but he's yeah. a German also, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. But thank you, brother, for that information. I don't dispute any of it. Um, it is what it is. We know that they're casting spells with words, uh, spoken word and paper, and that's why I'm not an advocate of other people using other people's paperwork um, because they're not under- entering understanding that not only are they speaking legal, but they're trying to trap folks with their legal and legalese and spells and jurisdiction, and they're using sorcery. And the people that use the paperwork, they don't even have a clue how deep it is. So it's deeper than you opening up a book thinking that you have them figured out. Right, people, people so, right, people so con- confused. Even, even the more the confused. If you use the word state, that is a corporatized term. You right. cannot claim a name of a state. They weren't states before they got here. So how right. are you saying that for the United States? Some say right. of the United States of America, and then some say for. You're still using the word state. Right. So you you lying to the people already. 
<laughs> right, or either they don't know. Um, but either way, again, people can keep playing the paperwork game if they want to and getting locked up. That's on them. Mm-hmm. And shame on you if you're using someone else's paperwork. Shame on you. So I'm not mm-hmm. in any way... I'm not even going to get into that paperwork stuff because people don't mm. do enough research and put the shit together they sell. So I don't even have any comment on that, but thank <laughs> you for bringing up that information. I appreciate it. You're welcome. Okay then, brother. Peace and love. Peace and okay. love. <laughs> okay. Um, uh huh. I'm sorry. Go ahead, brother Sean. But the people that are creating their paperwork still ain't getting shit done. So, I mean, no. What what difference do paperwork mean anyway? They've broken every treaty that they've ever signed before they before the ink was dry. <laughs> right. I'm just right. Because it was a spell when they wrote the treaty, but anyhow, go ahead. (laughs) These people profit off a war. Yes. And it's it's not in paper money like people think. It ain't about gold, silver, diamonds, none of that. Right. As we told y'all for the past three, three and a half years, your energy is the real current. Absolutely. You can spend it going along with all that shit. Yep. Yep. Any type of paperwork that you do, you have to send to them. Yep. I don't care what you say on there. I'm indigenous, I'm aboriginal, I'm a god, I'm from Egypt, I'm from Africa, I'm from Atlantis, <laughs> I'm from the moon, I'm from Mars, I came out the motherfucking sun, I'm a star, it don't matter. They don't give a fuck about none of that shit. As long as you are sending them paperwork, you're acknowledging their rulership. Mm-hmm. Yeah. The whole system has to go. It's not a matter of correcting yourself in the system. That's right. That's right. The system has to go. Period. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Because the in- indigenous people were in violation with the first agreement that they made. So I'm not impressed with any treaties with XYZ Elemental P Nation. You were in fucking violation then. Because nobody gave you the authority to sell, mama. She is not a whore. You cannot pimp her and sell her. So you was in violation then. And you curse your goddamn bloodline. And that's why they can't get away from the paperwork. So keep on playing these games with yourself. Keep spending centuries doing the same shit over and over again, expecting different results. This shit ain't hard, people. It's about nature. And until you get it right, you're going to keep being enslaved. So I'm sorry, Brother Sean. Go ahead. I mean, if they just think about it, I mean, look at these so-called white people. How many of them are free? Any of their paperwork workers? <laughs> no matter how much money they have, when they decide to come after them, they get them too, don't Yeah, they? they locking them right the hell on up. They don't give a damn about that sovereignty. None of that. Clink, clink. Take it, taking their shit, their paperwork, and nothing ain't working. 
It's a system. It is. It ain't about color. They didn't rename all the fucking white people too. The fact that you're around that, calling yourself goddamn yeah. white, you saying that you're nationless and stateless. Exactly. And then whatever you calling yourself, other than that, as far as from your so-called native land, your ancestors stole that shit. That's true. And you just move the fuck over here and start appropriating. That's true. So, I mean, you know, in the grand scheme of things, the only paperwork y'all should be worried about, if you must have paperwork, is the paperwork telling you who the fuck you are and where the fuck you came from. At the end, that's where the fuck you should be doing. Exactly. Concentrate on that. <laughs> yeah, because if you have a right to anything, that's where it's at. You don't have a right to shit over here because it's all fucking fraud. Yes, it is. From day fucking one. Ain't nothing y'all doing over here lawful. Period. Nothing. I don't care what the system say. I don't care if you got driver's license, you got a college education instead of the other, you got all these certificates, license, letters behind your name, guess what? It still ain't shit. It's in a fraudulent system. It's all bullshit. It is. It is. So don't none of that shit matter. What matters is my mom. That's right. Is my mom. Right. Y'all fucking up. Yep. He talking about bringing industry back, coal industries and shit like that. Dude, you talking about fucking with my mom? Yep. All yep. y'all gotta go. And whoever yep. riding with them, y'all riding out with them. Period. Yep. Yep. It's yep. done. It's over with. And as um, I love what I Am the Universe said, if it is not found in nature, netter, then it obviously must be a fiction. So I don't, mm-hmm. all that other fuck shit folks are talking about, such and so was here first, such and so signed, such and so agreement, God damn it! I don't want to hear none of it. We can discuss it, to put the pieces together, but I'm not impressed with any of it. Because, again, Mother Earth is not for sale. She is not a whore. And the people place curses upon themselves and their generation, calling themselves, selling her. And digging up parts of her, trading and doing commodity. So I'm not impressed with none of that shit. So very good point. Uh Uh-huh. They say we're living during the time of revelation, right? Mm Mm-hmm. Age of knowing. Right. And what's being revealed and what we're knowing is all the traitorous bloodlines. Yes. The bloodlines that, by their own admission, of all of these atrocities that have yes. taken place, because they're responsible for them all, because by their own admission, them in leadership position while they went to yes. Yep. Or or they went in hiding. Mm-hmm. Well, you know how they say. They say they knew that, you know, that we was going to go to sleep and then, you know, right. we just don't need them to remind us later. Right, right. They, you know, going to give them the little information is that in the third, so the information won't be lost. Blah, 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 blah. And um, in the chat, uh, 
I am the universe said that uh, the white people are the front. Mm-hmm. And we know that. We know that now. So we need to look at the shit the way it for what it is. Um, you know, and if folks don't want to look at it for for what it is, that's on them. That's their right. Uh, you got my white folks too. Y'all, y'all need to realize that y'all was just a pawn in this game. Y'all fucking pawn. You a pawn in this fucking game. Absolutely. Absolutely. So people can keep playing with themselves if they want to, literally and figuratively. That's their motherfucking choice. Keep repeating cycles. Keep cursing your bloodlines. That's on you. Now they about to get wiped out. That's what's about to happen. Well, that too. You could stand out again, like I say. You can stand outside and you explain that to the motherfucking plasma and that sun, and them suns, as that plasma is tasing you in the ass. Explain to the plasma what type of contract you had on what day with whom. I don't want to hear it. Okay. They want they to tell my somebody knowing everything. Mama know everything y'all do. All the blood was spilled on her. That's right. Everything you did took place on her. You think she don't know what the fuck you did? And you still and you still ain't quote unquote repented? No. Nope. Y'all instead brag about what you did and still looking for privileges and everything? And looking to rule again? Yeah. yeah, that shit is over with. It's over with. Absolutely. Absolutely. All right, so we're on the new Plymouth Charters. I know we got off on a tangent, but it is what it is. Yeah. So this is by King James the Sixth. Uh I got to the part where he gonna sit up here and talk about his heirs and successors give and grant to the said governor and company. So there again, we that company comes into play and uh, their successor that the governor or in his uh, absence, the deputy governor of the said company for the time being and such of the assistants and free men of the said company as shall be present or the greater number of them so assembled, whereof the governor or deputy governor and six of the assistants at the least to be seven shall have full power and authority to choose, nominate, and appoint such and so many others as they shall think fit and that shall be willing to accept the same to be free of the said company and body and them into the same to admit and to elect and constitute such officers as they shall think, feel, and requisite for the ordering, managing, and dispatching of the affairs of the said governor and company and their successors. (sighs) I hate reading these fucking contracts. Anyway, and to make laws and ordinance for the good and the welfare of the said company and for the government and ordering of the said lands and plantation and the people inhabiting and to inhabit it the same as to them from time to time shall thou meet. So as such laws and ordinance be not contrary or repugnant to the laws and statutes of this our realm of England. Okay, so y'all see this bullshit, this 1629, these motherfucking laws, ordinances, company, this shit ain't new. Okay, so the author says, did you see that? The charter said that the governors could not make laws that were contrary to the English realm. And at this time, ladies and gentlemen, slavery was considered an abomination, not only to the kingdom of England, 
but to most of the European arena at that time. By the time you are through reading this book, you will see that the English slave trade has to be divided between the Stuart kings and the Hanover kings. The black Stuart kings did not involve themselves in the slave trade. It was the black German kings, the Georges. I kept asking myself why. If the black Scots founded the 13 colonies, why would the Scottish kings enslave their own people? Um, the answer was simple. King George was a black German. He was not a Scot. He had no problem enslaving the black Scots since they were not his people. Um, there is no mention of slavery in this charter timeline of 1630. Okay, um, so then he just goes to the Maryland Charter of 1632. Now, this is by King Charles I of Scotland. Um, if you all are going to continue with us in the chat room, um, I've truly enjoyed all of you, and shout out to everyone in uh, the chat room. Shout out to you, Shadow Warrior, uh, for dropping some stuff as well. Um you're going to continue with us. We have eight minutes before we go into overtime. You will need to dial in to 929-477-3858. Again, that's 929-477-3858. We go into overtime, uh, well, 10 p.m. Eastern time. So you have a little bit under seven minutes. All right. Okay. So this is the Maryland Charter issued in 1633 by King Charles I of Scotland. And for as much as we have above made and ordained the aforesaid now Baron of Baltimore, the true Lord and proprietor of the whole province, as for, as for said, Know ye therefore further that we forge our heirs and successors, there to go with the heirs and successors, do grant unto the said now barren in whose uh, fidelity, prudence, justice, and provident circumspection of mind, we repose the greatest confidence and to his heirs for the good and happy government of the said province free, full, and absolute power by the tenure of these presents to ordain, make, and enact laws of what kind soever, <clears throat> according to the sound discretion, whether related to the public state of the said province or the private utility. Now, I'm not making this shit up, y'all. I'm just reading out of blood charter, mail-in charter. Rather, relating to the public state of the said province or the private utility of individuals and of and with the advice, assent, and approbation of the free man of the same province or the greater part of them or their delegates or deputies whom we will shall be called together for the framing of laws when and as often as need shall require by the aforesaid now Baron of Baltimore and his heirs and in the form which shall seem best to him or them and the same to publish under the seal of their aforesaid now Baron of Baltimore and his Heirs and the duly to execute the same upon all persons for the time being with the aforesaid province and the limits thereof or under his or their government and power in sailing towards Maryland or thence returning outward bound either to England or elsewhere rather to any other part of our or any other foreign dominions wheresoever established by the imposition of fines, imprisonment, 
and other punishment whatsoever, even if it's necessary and the quality of the offense require it by private privatization a member or life by him, the aforesaid now Baron of Baltimore and his heirs, or by his or her, his or their deputy, lieutenant, judges, justices, magistrates, officers, and ministers, to be uh, <clears throat> constituted and appointed according to the tenure of the true intent of these present, and to constitute and ordain judges, justices, magistrates, and officers of what kind, for what cause, and with what power soever within that land, and the sea of those parts, and in such form as to the said now baron of Baltimore or his heirs shall seem most fitting, and also to remit, release, pardon, and abolish all crimes and officials offenses whatsoever against such laws, whether before or after judgment passed, <clears throat> and to do all and singular other things belonging to the completion of justice and to courts, um, pre- praetorian judiciaries and tribunals, judicial forms and modes of proceedings, although expressed mention thereof in these presents be not made and by the judges by them delegated to award process hold please and determine in those courts uh, praetorian judiciaries and tribunals in all action suits causes and matters whatsoever as well criminal as personal real and mixed and uh, praetor which said law so to be punished as above said we will enjoin charge and command to be most absolute and firm in law and to be kept in those parts by all subjects and liege men of us our heirs and successors so far as they concern them and to be inviolably observed under the penalties therein expressed or to be expressed so nonetheless, <clears throat> that the laws aforesaid be consonant to reason and be not repugnant or contrary, but so far as conveniently may be agreeable to the law, statutes, customs, and rights of this our kingdom of England. There is no, okay, so uh, let me stop. So as y'all can see, this is the continuation of... um. He didn't give all of Maryland's charter. He just gave us part of it. This was section This was section 8 of Maryland's charter, y'all. Okay? So as I'm hoarse from reading all that bullshit, was he not establishing authority and jurisdiction and their statutes and codes and the officers all under this company? And people still want to dibble and dabble in this funk ass paperwork. Yeah. This this was again back up in the 1600s. Sixteen thirty-three. They're establishing jurisdiction under the company and pretty much tells all of the officers that's up under this company that their first duty is to the company and to not contradict or be out of order of English law. But folks still want to sit up and play these games with folks with their paperwork. All right. So the author says, now this is my take on it. This is not the brother in the book's take on it. When I read all that, I'm like, this bullshit goes back far. This is all Roman, folks. That shit ain't never changed. Okay, so he goes, uh, the author goes, there is no mention of slavery in the Maryland Charter. Okay, so he just wanted to um, expound upon that. 
So I will uh, pause in case Brother Sean or Sis, you have something to put on it before I <laughs> hmm. go to the next charter. <laughs> this? Uh-huh. Is this Sandra still with us? I think she is. Let me see. I'm still here. Oh. Okay, yeah, she's still here. Quietly. <laughs> And, you know, because I, know. Uh, I mean, James had enough kids to populate this whole country. And, um, <laughs> right. I mean, the see, you know, you, lot, it was a lot of stewards, right? It was, well, not, you mentioned a whole lot of names last week, and I knew a lot of them names. <laughs> okay, right, I'm but like, now remember, that doesn't say that all of those. Um, were off of that Stewart line. I know Colbert's too, but what I'm saying is, <laughs> <laughs> he had enough seed in him, and he gave out enough seed in him to to populate this right. whole entire country. We should still be in control. Melanated folks all over this place should still be in control. So that's why I'm looking at and listening to. I'm like, so how did this stuff get? way it is, you know, it's just like his intent was to give it to his heirs and and a lot of those heirs are here, but they don't have that so who actually does? Well, remember when we discussed all of this but very good question, sis I'm so glad you brought that up, sweetie because remember <laughs> when we discussed okay. this, and th- this is the part that I want melanated people and Caucasian people to get it and you know those in the chat room uh, I am the universe and shadow warrior have been dropping in the chat room of the hidden powers bloodlines are still running it they just have a different front man the 300 family yeah it's weird Roman Empire. And even if it was, I'll I'll even. It's Vatican and it's uh, the Queen over there and uh, Frederick. I mean, not. She's really not. She takes. No, she's not, but I mean, the. I don't I mean, even they, factor they, her they, in, into nothing significant. It's, it's the powers behind the scene. That's what we're right. trying to get they at. They peons, exactly. they front people. They exactly. pretenders. They don't exactly. have no real power. Nope. They do what they're told. So when and I be, my, I'm sorry, what, go ahead, Brother Sean. When I was saying what I what I was saying, <laughs> they know who the fuck I'm talking to. I'm talking directly to that real bloodline. Not the mm-hmm. filter down pets that they made. I'm right. talking to you motherfucker. You hear me? Yep. You're right. You you absolutely right. And um shit, I lost my point. But yeah, no, I mean that's that's what we're trying to get you to see. Oh, I got the point that and less and, and this this is me. Because even if um Elizabeth and them were melanated, let's say everybody across the planet was melanated in powers of position today. I still don't give a fuck. It's still out of balance with nature. Mm-hmm. You were not put on Mother Earth for anybody to rule over you. That's the point that everyone on this planet, not everyone, because folk are starting to wake up, fails to realize, so really, who gives a fuck if it's white folk, brown folk, light-skinned in it, blue, black, 
are a divine being. You don't need no ruler. And until people get that and stop jumping on sides again, you're going to stay enslaved. Sorry, go ahead on, Brother Sean. Aren't they the ones that say that they was created by the Anunnaki to be a slave race? Um, who was saying that? Uh, the the original Romans or uh, the Caucasians? The Caucasians, the so-called white folks. Yeah, that that's what they say. And Jordan. King James to Jacob to Yaku, he created them. Uh, hmm. Is King James and his bloodline the Anunnaki? Well, 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 let me take a sip of water. Wow. <laughs> they were conquering indigenous lands. Yes, so they were. If they weren't indigenous to no goddamn place where the fuck they come from. Right. Right. And couldn't Yaku be translated to Jacob? Yeah. Okay. Which didn't King James take on that title or name as Jacob? Yeah. And don't that particular bloodline, they keep their names within that bloodline? So that's why you get the James and the Charleses and all of that um, recycled. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Right. Okay. Oh, and before I forget, Sis Cheryl had um, dropped me some information when we were talking about Julius Caesar. Shout out to Sis Cheryl. She always brings uh, wonderful insight. She said Julius Caesar, his actual name was Gaius Julius Caesar. Gaius was the name his wife, uh, parents, and close relatives would have called him. Julius was the name of his tribe. The Julie, all Romans belong to a tribe, which tribe determined your social status. It would not have been used to address him except as part of his full name on special occasions and in the third person, such as his funeral. A Caesar probably pronounced Kaiser. Wow, now that's interesting. Kaiser. Mm, that's really, mm-hmm. really interesting. Ain't that interesting? Damn. Yeah, yeah, Kaiser Permanente, because he spelt it uh, mm-hmm. K-A-I, Sar. So I'm I'm assuming that's pronounced Kaiser. Damn, yeah. Mm-hmm. Kaiser was his family name or surname. Damn, yeah, I'm just all the way just like damn, damn, damn. Used by contemporaries, friends, and equals. After he um, instigated the civil war that would turn Rome from a republic to a uh, monarch empire, the name Caesar became synonymous with king or ruler. Gone, sis. Sis be dropping it, boy. In Russia, czar, German. Okay, so she broke down German Kaiser. Girl, go ahead on with it. She spelled it the Kaiser that we know as Kaiser. So, in Russian Tsar, German Kaiser, interesting note, his adopted son and heir, um, Octavian Augustus, prefers the title um, Principus, meaning leader, and the word from which we get prince. Damn. Thank you, Sis Cheryl. So there you go. Damn, I learned something on that. So now we even know where that that name Kaiser came from. Roman. Everything is tied back to Rome. And yeah, and they killed all the czars uh, who are like Kaisers, 
in Russia because that that was a family of a lot of people. So they tried to eliminate all of them people. Right. 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 Okay, uh, where are we at in time? Okay, we got some time, so we go over a few more charters. All right, so this is the Rhode Island Charter. This is 1636. Now, this is um, this was in, uh, issued by King Charles II of Scotland. Um, charters of Guernsey, Tim Thornton, 2004. Rhode Island... Ooh, y'all, damn, this stuff. And it ain't like I ain't read this before, y'all, but it's just, I tell you, y'all. Rhode Island was called the Red Island based on the translation in Paleo-Hebrew. See, I can't make this up, y'all. Damn, brother broke it down. R equals Ra. H equals Ha. O. D equals Da. And E equals ha. Interpreted into English, it would spell read or red. The island was called the Red Island after Zara, the son of Judah, who had the scarlet thread wrapped around his wrist. If you have some time, you should read Genesis chapter 38, verses 24 to 30. Concerning the birth of Zara and the scarlet thread placed on his wrist at birth. When Joshua, Joshua 2nd chapter, verse 17 through 21, sent the two spies to spy out of the land of Jericho, they told Rahab the harlot to place a scarlet thread in her window for protection. And she did. The, re- the road and he puts in parenthesis, red, island charter was issued to Dr. John Clark. I tried desperately to find an image of Mr. Clark, but I came up empty. Um, and then he's just pointing out again that there was no mention of slavery in Rhode Island Charter in 1636. Okay, so let me see. Is he giving us Rhode Island? Uh, okay, so he didn't give us the, the wording of Rhode Island Church, he, Charter. He was just giving us some background. All right, so now we know that Rhode Island was really named Road is equal to red and is tied to their Hebrew biblical um, scarlet thread narrative. Okay, so the Connecticut Charter issued by King Charles I of Scotland and further of our more ample grace, certain knowledge, and mere mokan we have given and granted, and by this present for us, our heirs and successors, all me give and grant unto the said governor and company. There we go with the company again. So, again, none of this corporation shit is new. At the state, county, town, and federal level, it ain't new, y'all. Um, the governor and company of the English colony of Connecticut in New England in America, and to every inhabitant there, and to every person and persons trading thither, and to every such persons and persons, see, there we go with this persons and persons shit. And y'all that want to dab and dab in the paperwork, y'all know what I'm talking about. And to every such person and persons, as are or shall be free of the said colony, full power and authority from time to time and at all times hereafter, to take, ship, transport, and carry away for and towards the plantation and defense of the said colony, excuse me, such of our loving subjects and strangers as shall or will willingly accompany them in and accompany them in and to their said colony and plantation, except such persons and persons as are or shall be therein restrained by us, our heirs and successors. 
and also to ship and transport all in all manner of goods, chattels, merchandise, and other things whatsoever that are or shall be useful or necessary for the inhabitants of the said colony and may lawfully be transported thither. Uh, nevertheless, not to be discharged of, I can't make this shit up, y'all. Y'all that dibble and dab in that motherfucker paperwork should know what I'm reading. Nevertheless, not to be discharge of payment to us, our heirs and successors of the duties, customs, and subsidiaries which are or ought to be paid or payable for the same. Um, so the author goes, the key phrase in this, is this the Connecticut Charter or did I miss? Yeah, it is the Connecticut Charter. The key phrase in this Connecticut Charter is the strangers that willingly accompany the colonists. Um, the king said willingly not to enslave. All right, so here's the charter continued. And for the directing, ruling, and disposing of all other matters and things whereby our said people, inhabitants there, may be so religiously, peacefully, and civilly governed as their good life and orderly conversation may win and invite the natives of the country to the knowledge and obedience of the only true God and Savior of mankind and the Christian faith, which in our royal um, intercons and adventures, free professing is the only principal end of this plantation. Okay, so pause. This is the author again. This section states that the principal reasoning for giving the royal charter to Connecticut colony is that they would extend the kingdom of God to the indigenous people, not slavery. Okay, so this is where I'm going to disagree with the author because uh, I know where he's going with it. He's talking about not physical bondage, slavery. But that king and the kingdom of God that they was hustling was still indeed slavery. As they just named a laundry list of things on how they were going to run their company on the indigenous people's land. Okay, but I get the author's point that the slavery that they taught us was not the English way. Okay, but the flip side of that who brought the religion to these American shores? Who brought the motherfucking Christianity? I'm going to take a sip of water while somebody answered that. Dear old Jamesy boy. <laughs> but you know what? If you think of it, though, did he bring the New Testament? Did he write that? It doesn't that? matter. That came later, I, though. But he it brought doesn't the matter. Test. You think so? It doesn't matter. It it does not, here's why I say it does not matter. The indigenous people of those lands was minding a motherfucking business. (laughs) Living under natural law, in tune with mother nature. Here comes the conquerors giving them their God. Yeah. So what difference does it make if it was the Old and New Testament? Who the fuck are they? But see, the the difference is the commerce. The New Testament is code for their commerce system. And um, I heard some of them talking about it. What you know, what the New Testament actually is saying, uh-huh. and they they understand how to use that commerce. Uh, according to the words of Jesus. So that's why I'm saying that they are more uh, vested in the New Testament because they get rid of the old. They don't even want to use that. They don't even want to use that at all. They well, just, I find that interesting. Who who are they? Because I, I, I don't want to misconstrue what you're saying. Europe, let's, let's classify who are they. The Europeans that I heard are What's talking Europeans? about the, the melanated bloodline Europeans or the 
later Caucasian European. Caucasian so can, European. Okay, okay, okay. See, so I can know what you were talking about. Okay. Yeah. So okay. they use that. They, they. I was shocked when I heard what the fishers of men really means. And, yeah, I and, think George uh, Maxwell breaks all that down quite well. Yeah, they they break it down, and it's so. James came in with the old, and I don't know right. who added new. So, because the New Testament is strictly for their commerce system, and people think it's for their salvation, but it's not. So, you know, I don't want to get back on that. Right. One, but, no, that's, um, that's a good point. That's that's a good point. I see where you're going with that. Um, I just again find it highly interesting that. Everyone is being taught that the melanated people were given the Bible by the white missionaries. That is not so. It's not so. No, it's not. But they really put it down because that was another another way that uh, King James kept the spiritual nature of uh, us down, you know, by saying that they were witches and stuff. So, right. you know, That's either what the way, whole demonology was about. Yes. Yeah, that either way they have capitalized with his conquering abilities. Exactly. By using that uh so-called god spell. Right. To keep absolutely keep them. Absolutely, sis. Absolutely. So, I'm going to read that again. I'm sorry. Go ahead, brother Sean. Okay, since that book keeps coming back up. Demonology. No, the Bible. Oh, yeah, uh uh-huh. Like they intended for it to do. Yep. No matter what level you're looking at it from, whether you're looking at it as a science book, a book of astrology. Right. Genealogy. Right. Whatever. It's not all. It's not. It's not not art. And it's not for us. Nope. It's a weapon against us. Yep. Yeah. Period. Yep. Yep. And as far as for, like with the law, now they're saying that the law is now based upon the Bible. The Bible is now the Constitution because there is no more Constitution. Uh There's ecclesiastical law. Right. And once again, while Noble Jurali told the Moors not to put that book down Uh in order to keep them part and parcel yeah. To these contracts mm, and treaties. That's deep. that's deep, Brother Sean. Damn. Woo. It started with King James and Yep, it did. Because the Bible was his masterpiece that he had translated just for over here. Yep. Sure was. Every place else is translated in their languages. Yep. And it still didn't hit the, these shores until what, the either 17th or 1800s? Yep. Yep. Well, I mean, ain't none of that what people say it is anyway. I don't care if it's sitting here with those ancient names or whatever, whatever. Don't none of that shit matter now. It really doesn't. During the patriarchal reign. That's right. All that shit gotta eat. Yep. Yep. And we put in too much energy into all these bits and pieces of information that they release them as soon as the fuck they feel like it. Ain't nobody discovered the motherfucking thing. Yep. You know, people talking about, ooh, 
who, who I came across this. What do you mean you came across that? Wasn't it on the internet? <laughs> I mean, somebody <laughs> put that shit up there. If you ain't going within and putting in the real work, you ain't the way shit. No. Nope. I'm done. All right. Thank you, brother. And that's why people still running around confused because people get so stuck in the books that they're still not connecting to nature and going within. And so they going in circles, but that's that's yet another thing. But, you know, we're bringing you this information to bring you the receipts. So you can enter and understand when I say I don't give a fuck about that, I'm going to start referring people back to these motherfucking shows. <laughs> so here we go. <laughs> I just want to, you know what I'm saying, sis, shit. Yeah, so, yeah that's um, true, but they ain't no listen. <laughs> if they, they won't, I don't give a damn, but I just don't want to hear that bullshit. You know, like the uh, one troll come calling up here talking about a motherfucking <laughs> name. If you don't get your dizzy ass off my goddamn line that I pay for, you better. But okay, okay. here we go. So I just want to repoint this out. The royal charter to the Connecticut colony is that they would extend the kingdom, kingdom of God to the indigenous people, not slavery. Okay? So again, indigenous people didn't need their motherfucking help with none of that. Not they kingdom of God, not they motherfucking charters and contracts and commerce, none of that. All right, so here we go, continuing on the Connecticut charter. Um, And to take or surprise by all ways and means whatsoever, all and every such person or persons with their ships, armor, ammunition, and other goods of such as shall in such hostile manner, uh, invade or attempt to defeat uh, or attempt the defeating of the said plantation or the hurt of the said company and inhabitants and upon just causes to invade and destroy the natives or other enemies of the said colony. Uh, so here's the author. The king is implicit in his description of the use of deadly force but nowhere does he state that the colonists are to invade, destroy, and, ex- and enslave. Okay, so again, the author is proving the point that in these charters, it said nothing about slavery. Okay, so here's the continuum. Now, we in Connecticut, y'all. To have and to hold the same unto the said governor and companies, their successors and assignees, forever upon trust and for the use and benefit of themselves and their associates, freemen of the said colonies. Now, now y'all notice they keep throwing that motherfucking freemen in there. Of the said colonies, their heirs and assignees, to be holden of us, our heirs and successors, as of our manner of East Greenwich, in free and common sockage and not in capti nor by night service. Um, I don't know what that word is. You're milding and painage, therefore, to us, our heirs and successors, only the fifth part of all the ore and gold. So here we go with the fuck shit. Here we go. Here we go. Violation of natural law. Here we go. All of, all of this shit is a violation. But here we go with the direct harm of mama. The fifth part of all the ore and gold and silver, which from time to time and at all times hereafter shall be there gotten, had, or obtained. Now, which other entity 
according to mythology, came on earth to mine gold. I'll pause while I take a little sip. Are you talking about them people I always talk about? (laughs) The Anunnaki? Okay, I'm just saying, y'all. I'm just saying. (laughs) Because, again, the indigenous people, we didn't give a fuck about no gold, none of that. It just was. It was a part of Mother Earth. Okay? But here here come the English, them, with they fuck shit. Okay, so it says, in lieu of all services, duties, demands whatsoever to be us, our heirs or successor, therefore, or their out rendered, made, or paid. Okay, so in other words, you going to sit up and have the audacity to say, not only are you claiming jurisdiction on the land, setting up your company on the land, putting your associates on the land, you got the motherfucking audacity to say what you can pull out of Mother Earth, what you can pull out of her body to do commerce. But you bring in the kingdom of God. Get the fuck out of here. All right, so the author goes, this charter makes provisions for the colony to pay the king one-fifth of the gold, ore, and silver that is to be extracted from the earth. Okay? And the author goes, but he never mentions revenue from the North Atlantic slave trade, and this is an important omission. Okay, so the author's point here was, once again, he didn't give a fuck about no slavery. Okay? His concern is the gold, the ore, and silver that they are extracting from Mother Earth. That sounds awfully fucking familiar with those ancient mythologies. All right. What we hear what we have here are the facts, ladies and gentlemen. The Black Stuart Highlanders were not involved in the slave trade per the laws of England. This explains the action of King Charles I when he was trying to raise an army to defend the three kingdoms against Oliver Cromwell. His wife, Queen Henrietta, Queen Henrietta Marie of France, went all over Europe pawning her jewelry to raise money for arms and soldiers, but they never received money from the sale of humans. These original charters illuminate the fact that the black Europeans were interested in religion and the extraction of precious metals. In the beginning of this chapter, I informed you that in some of the states I would deal with the color and the images, and in other states I will deal with non-slavery wording of the charters. Okay. All right, so there you go with Connecticut. Here we go with the Carolinas. Oh, yeah. Issued by King Charles II of Scotland, the Royal Charter of Carolina, 1663. Okay, so now, y'all, he's taking excerpts from this. Now, you can go... um, Online, you can find all of these charters online, but I so happened to went to South Carolina um, and found the charter. That's how I knew Charles had issued it, and I'm like, oh hell no! So you can go get the full version of these charters, family, online. Okay, it says all crimes and offenses whatsoever against the said laws and to do all and every other thing and things which unto the um, complete establishment of justice unto courts, sessions, and forms of judicator and manners of proceedings therein do belong, although in these presents expressed mention be not made thereof. And by judges, 
by him or them delegated to a ward process, hold pleas, and determine in all the said courts and places of judic- uh, judicature all actions, suits, and causes whatsoever as well criminal or civil, real, mixed, personal, or any other kind of nature whatsoever which laws, so as, as for said, to be published, our pleasure is, and we do require, enjoin, and command shall be absolute firm and available in law, and that all the liage or league, that must be league, league people of us, our heirs and successors within the said province of Carolina, do observe and keep the same and voluble in these those parts. So far as they concern them under the pains and penalties therein expressed or to be expressed, provided nevertheless, nevertheless the said laws be consonant to reason, and as near as may be conveniently agreeable to the laws and customs, this our kingdom of England. Okay, so the author is pausing again, putting his putting his um putting something on it. He goes, I don't mean to beat a dead horse by illustrating the verbiage wording of each royal charter, but it is necessary to show you the consistency of the wording. I want to make it plain to you that the black Europeans had no desire to enslave the indigenous people of North America. The black Europeans had it in their minds that they were extending the kingdom of God. This is the reason that in my introduction, I wrote that this book was the first of its kind, because it is. Okay, so I also want to know, if you decide to go look at the uh, charters by each state, uh, Carolina was the only one that I I looked at, but it also breaks down, and you got to go back and look at the early one family, okay, look at the earliest one. On record, it also breaks down in the beginning of the charter how they divvied up the land. Okay, literally, it breaks down how they divvied up the land, how he was granting, meaning the king was granting the land to his boys and them, or as New York say, his mans and them. Okay. And then they even show you maps of the land. And you can see the maps of the land, how um, they had the Indian territories. And then if you keep going through the maps, you'll see how that the, the Indian territory kept shrinking and shrinking and shrinking. Okay, so I do want to point that out as well, that you can find that information in, in those charters. Okay, um, so below is a list of the men who ran the colonies. These were the princes, okay? So uh, the kings and them, mans and them. Um, and because that in so remote a country and saturate among us so many barbarous nations and the invasions as well of savage, savages as of other enemies, Pirates and robbers may probably be feared. Therefore, we have given, and for us, our heirs and successors do give power by these presents unto the said Edward Earl of Clarendon, George Duke of um, Albert Marie, William Lord Craven, John Lord Berkeley. Oh, that's interesting that Berkeley name, Anthony Lord Ashley, Sir George um, Catterick, Sir William Berkeley, and Sir John Cullerton. Okay. Um, Now, real quick, that just reminds me of the pirates. Um, There is a documentary on the city of Miami. It's on Amazon, Amazon Prime. And they talk about the founding of that city of Miami. And they talk about how the melanated folks founded Miami 
and they talk about people from Barbados that quote, quote, came over to Miami. So based on what we have gone through in this series, we should know that a lot of the folks from Barbados were shipped from, um, I want to say, Ireland over to Barbados. Okay, so in this documentary, they were talking about how Barbados thought they were better than the other colored folks. So in the documentary, they were saying they thought they were better because they weren't slaves and they were educated by the English. And they also talk in the uh, documentary how the, the blacks, quote, quote, melanated people built those structures in Miami. So meaning the old courthouses, so all of them old buildings were built by the, the melanated um, inhabitants of Miami. So um, they show some of the structures. I know they show one of them. And again, it looked Romanish English all day long. Okay, so just to put this stuff in content, but the pirates came into play because they were saying that the pirates uh, were right. And matter of fact, they said um, Key West. Key West was all melanated. Okay, but they were saying that the pirates, the black melanated pirates, was really clowning and, and stealing and shit. So I just found that interesting that in this particular charter of South Carolina that uh, King Charles had to talk about how uh, the pirates and the robbers were uh, feared. Okay, so I just wanted to point that out, family, that there has been a lot, a lot of history hidden. And although that documentary talks about the melanated people, uh, being the first inhabitants of um, Florida, specifically Miami, and they talk about Key West. They still don't have the narrative uh, all the way together on who the Bar the Barbados folks that bragged that they were not slaves and they were educated by the English. So now you know that they were indeed the English and who the other black folks that they look down on those other black folks they're classifying this in this documentary as the slaves uh, but we know now that they were the indigenous people so in this documentary they were talking about how there were all there was always friction between um the barbados folks and the um they're calling them slaves in the movie, but the indigenous folks in Miami. Okay. All right. All right. So in the next page is he's just going over. Um, he, he shows uh, pictures of um, King Charles's mans in them. <laughs> so all melanated. Um, all right. Uh, let me see. Let me see. It says. I'm going to continue. Hold on, y'all. Where did it? He just picked back up. Sorry, y'all. I got to get past the pictures. Okay, so he just picked back up. The heirs and assigned by themselves or their captains or other of their officers to levy, muster, and train all sorts of men of what condition or whatsoever born in the said province for the time being, and to make war and pursue the enemies as for said, as well by sea as by land, G, even without the limits of the said province, and by God's assistance to vanquish and take them, and being taken to put them to death by the law of war, or to save them at their pleasure, and to do all and every other thing which unto the charge of a captain general of any army belongeth or hath accustomed to belong as fully and freely as any captain of gen general 
of any army has or ever had the same. I have to admit that the wording of this charter is a little vague, but the Stuart Kings kept the Magna Carta. The Royal Charter of the Carolinas did not contain slave language. Okay, so no, it didn't. So again, they were going back to, um, it was all about commerce and jurisdiction. Okay, because that's what it, a charter is. It's basically a contract, and it outlines the boundaries of the said land, um, what type of business can be conducted on the land, etc. Okay, and so as you can see in these contracts of commerce, what they're calling charters, the indigenous people was a motherfucking afterthought. Actually, they wouldn't have thought at all. Only thing they mention are the indigenous people uh, pretty much don't uh, do any harm to them physically, okay? But as far as the indigenous people being involved in their motherfucking commerce, I ain't heard them mention shit up in these charters about that. All they keep talking about is they word of God. All right, so now we on Jersey now. Um, this is 1675, okay, that's the image of a map, oh, damn, so he dug up an image of a map of, uh, George Carteret, wow, okay, the eastern half of New Jersey belonged to Sir George Carteret, or Carter, Mmm. Interesting. I have blown up the image on the next page so that you can see the blackness of this Scott from Three Kingdoms. Yep, he sure is. There is another important fact that emerges from these images, however subtle and simple that it may seem. If you take a closer look at the black Scott, you will notice that they are not wearing (laughs) wigs. Look at how the hair is coming up from the scalp. Any woman on the block, (laughs) any woman on the block will tell you that the image of these people depict depict their real hair. True that, brother. They not wear no lace front (laughs) or no wig. Note also the black image of Carteret in the top right-hand corner of the stamp. Damn. So blood was even on the stamp. All right. Um, So he's just giving a little... um, Lineage on him that he came from the name Carter. So any melanated person holding that name Carter or Caucasian too. Okay. The derivative is Carteret. It traces its origins to the Channel Isles, which belong to Britain. And of course, the uh, Britons were black people, according to the European historians. Okay. So... Just telling you, uh, Caucasian people, you better check your shit. All right. So um, that's all he had to say, family, on um, the upper part of Jersey. So do just had a portion of, of Jersey. Pennsylvania Charter. Um, he, uh, once again, he prints, he gives receipts uh, with the melanated person um, on this particular uh, on page 82 Charles II By the grace of God King of England, Scotland, France And Ireland, Ireland Defender of the faith um, To all Whom these presents shall come Greets whereas are um, Trustee And well beloved subject William Penn Esquire Okay so y'all should be Peeping where all these motherfucking titles come from. I've mentioned trust in these charters, trustee, all of that. So none of that shit y'all talking with that paperwork, none of that shit is new. Okay? It's still all a Roman system. Okay. So, uh, our trustee and well-beloved subject, William Penn, Esquire, uh, 
uh, son and heir of Sir William Penn, deceased, out of a commendable desire to enlarge our English empire and promote such useful commodities as may be of benefit to us and our dominions. I told y'all this is all commerce. All right. As also to reduce the savage natives by gentle and just mandlers to the love of civil society and Christian religion. Okay, so let me th- go and take a little pause, sip some of my fucking water. I want to make sure y'all getting this. And then we're going to, damn, I thought we was going to finish tonight, y'all. We're going to have to continue next week. We should be able to conclude. Also to reduce the savage natives. So what were they using? To quote, quote, calm down the indigenous folk of the land. Because they wanted to do it gently. The love and civil society and Christian religion. Religion. Mm -hmm. So now who brought Christian religion to melanated folk? Mm Mm-hmm. That's all I'm saying. Which would make sense. Because if you indigenous to a land and you melanated, and a Caucasian person, more than likely, you probably never really seen Caucasian people. How the fuck they going to come up in your land talking to you about some Lord? But like, bro, who, who the hell is you? Mm-hmm. So it makes sense. So we're going to pause before we uh, – and we'll pick up with Pennsylvania because I do want to go through these charters. I do want to talk about Russia and also about Japan. So we're going to go for last words. Uh, Sis, you have any last words for the family? Well, it's a lot to swallow. It is. <laughs> it's, it's, you know, if we knew the dates – really well when these things happen, except for they put their history dates on there, not the real deals. So that's uh-huh. going to be so, it's a hard thing to uncover because the dates have been changed. And the names have been changed. And the colors have been changed. Everything's been changed. Yes. So anyway, yep. I'm just, ugh. <laughs> I know, it's a lot. It, it's a lot. So, again, when I first, because we had um, an idea, I know when Brother Sean and I have been talking behind the scenes for a couple of years, and he could correct me if I'm lying, we started piecing together. We're like, wait a minute, that's some bullshit. Melanated yeah. people mm-hmm. had to have done this shit. Yeah. So, when I read this brother's work, Cause I, what book did I buy first? Oh, I bought uh, six first, which deals with the 13 black colonies. And then when he made reference to four, I said, oh, hell to the no. I got to get four. So my wig was totally blown back because he brought the receipts and it ties into everything else. It ties into the whole, uh, quote, quote, more Africa connection. It ties into the spirituality connection. It knocks the the slavery stuff out of the park. Slavery was totally not what what we were taught. Um, Mm -hmm. So, you know, it's, it's a lot, family. And I know it's a lot. I know it's a lot to digest. Um, but melanated people, we got to get our heads together and you got to start looking at it for what it is and looking for people at people for who they truly are. Right. And you got to look beyond that color. Okay. And, you know, Caucasian people, that's on you. You better get your house in order and do your research. Because you have identities that's been put on you that's not even you. Now, you know, you'll have to be responsible 
for how you participated in the current quote quote white supremacy system but at the end of the day you're taking on identities that you didn't even have nothing to do with so you need to get your house in order as well so okay brother Sean you have any last words for the family I'm good sis okay Okay, family, well, thank you for being patient with us. Um, I thought this was going to be the last show, but we'll continue next week. I want to get through these charters. I want to uh, talk about the Black Russians, um, because that's who the Tartarian people are coming with this fuck shit, and also uh, the the Black Japanese. Um, So, yeah, thank you all so much. I uh, truly, truly appreciate your love and support, and we will be back next week. Thank you, uh, Brother Sean and Sis, my wonderful co-host. Love you very much. Thank you, A32, and um, thank you to the brothers and sisters in the chat room. Thank you all, family. Peace and love. We'll be back next Thursday.